and for a lot of different reasons. First of all, early in the ball game, a lot of mistakes by the Red Sox. They could have really put away Seattle early, but it's some bad base running. Manny Ramirez over aggressive, going to third base. You get two guys trapped at third, and of course you tag him out, and Ramirez is the guy that is out there. And then Dustin Pedroia with the bases loaded, the ground ball double play. Red Sox again only coming away with one run. And then the Seattle offense taking over. Uneski Betancourt with a three-run home run off John Lester. And of course later on it was Kenji Jojima with the two-run home run off Mike Timlin. So that combination of poor play early, letting too many opportunities just go by and of course the bad pitching also in the game was not a good start to this long trip low trip and I'm a, a believer Don in long trips like this especially against good ball clubs things can snowball so I think it's very important for the Red Sox to bounce back tonight behind Dice K give him some early run support that's what they need they need to get ahead of these Seattle Mariners so when you get toward the end of the game the sixth seventh and on you're not facing their best relievers because that's been a big problem for the Red Sox offense all season long. Well, tonight they go up against Jared Washburn, who lifetime is 3-3 three and three against the Red Sox. We'll have the first pitch from Seattle after this. When you're on the go, you need the convenience, quality, and pricing you'll always find at Extra Mart. Extra Mart is proud to be your headquarters for the 147th Annual Woodstock Fair in Woodstock, Connecticut, this Labor Day weekend, August 31st through September 3rd. The Woodstock Fair features over 48 acres of rides and exhibits, great food and top-notch entertainment, including Trick Pony, The Bangles, The Cherry Pop and Daddies, Quiet Riot, Jordan Knight, and Josh Grayson. Save $10 by getting your advanced admission and ride tickets at participating Extra Mart stores. Tickets are going fast, so get yours today. Behold the wonder of it. Its wide mouth allowing it to flow cold and unrestrained all that is parched. It is awe-inspiring, is it not? You really love this river. River? No. I'm talking about this Coors Light Wide Mouth Can. The Wide Mouth Can, a wide opening for wide open refreshment, only for frost brewed Coors Light. People will travel great distances to enjoy this. You can get these Wide Mouth Cans anywhere. We're talking about the river. Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. I've got it. We've got it. We've got it. Got what? Health insurance. Massachusetts residents are now required to have it. And the state's health connector makes it more affordable and easier to get. I've got it. Me too. Call or go to our website to compare plans, get information, and choose the right plan for you. Get preventive care and medical and financial protection. I'm getting it. I've used it. We've, We've got, got it. it. Get health insurance now through the state's health connector. Captioning provided by Finagle Bagel, Boston's best sandwich soup salad, of course, Bagel Cafe, with 20 locations at Eastern Mass. Boston Red Sox baseball on Nesson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, the New England Subaru dealers, Foxwoods Resort Casino, Rico, Aflac, and by New England Toyota dealers. Hey, good evening once again everybody welcome back to Safeco Field in Seattle as the Red Sox and the Mariners get ready to play the middle game of this three game series a tough loss here last night for the Red Sox a win today by the New York Yankees so uh, things are tightening up a little bit in the American League East heading into tonight's action the Yankees winning big today and Alex Rodriguez picking up home run number 500 today as part of the uh, 16 run attack by the Yankees as they beat Kansas City. And this afternoon the Red Sox have the chance to get it back to seven games if they're able to beat the Mariners tonight as the Red Sox come in at 66 and 43 into tonight's action. And Jerry talked a little bit about it last night. Uh, this really is a very tough trip. I mean just uh, trip wise uh, having to go this distance for the third time and you're playing some pretty good clubs out here too. Yeah you really are Don. The Seattle Mariners are legitimate. I mean, there's no question about that. When you look at the bullpen that they have you know they get leads uh, uh, middle of the game they can hold them because they get so many very good arms out the bullpen and you know it's a unique little team I and mean, they got a lot of little pieces here he bet and caught the shortstop was played the tremendous baseball we saw the home run last night uh, Lopez who plays a very solid defensive second base they got a, a boost from Adam Jones who was in there last night coming up from Triple A he is not in the starting lineup tonight yeah, they got a legitimate shot at this division and of course in this road trip you see the second place team who are making a surge right now the Seattle Mariners then you see the Angels who have had their struggles with Oakland but uh, still a very good club so the first six games of this uh, road trip are going to be very difficult then you go back east and you play the Baltimore Orioles and we just saw the Orioles and you know that they're capable of putting it together too so Red Sox got to get the ships uh, straight and, and get it going you know tonight because 
And I've said this many times on these long road trips late in the year. If things start badly, it seems like it builds and it builds and it builds. And all of a sudden, you're looking at a sub-500 road trip, which you don't want to have. Well, John McLaren and his crew uh, certainly could win the division there. Just uh, two and a half games back of the Angels heading into tonight's action. But uh, also very much in the mix in the wild card. The Indians are currently playing tonight. So right now the Mariners are a half game back of the Cleveland Indians in the wild card. So tons of possibilities here for the Mariners. We got a look uh, last night once again at their bullpen. And that appears to be a very big strength for Seattle. Well, as Terry Francona was saying today when he spoke with the media that uh, these guys can really match up. You know, they can go match up so from about the sixth inning on the type of ball arms they have out there they got good balance they have four right handers in their bullpen three left handers in the bullpen and of course the highlighted guys are Cheryl uh, from the left side and JJ puts of course to close it out but in between they got guys like Green Green who came in last night got a big double play ball with Manny Ramirez at the plate so they're young they're talented they throw hard and they're very good well we'll step aside and come back with more in the first pitch after this from Seattle Speckled rainbow thingamahoozy. Charlie Moore, uh, a show about fishing. They have flavor for sure. And usually it's based upon me being completely insane. Uh, Charlie Moore, he's completely insane. Ah! Woo! This summer, catch all new episodes with a mad fisherman every Sunday, all summer long. It's the Charlie Moore Summer of Fun on Essen, brought to you by Overshawn Hardware. Ultimate. Adjective, not to be improved upon or surpassed. Greatest, unsurpassed. Red Sox, collective noun, not to be improved upon or Hazel May. Proper noun, greatest, ultimate. It's the nine must-see stories each week from Red Sox Nation. Granite City Electric's Ultimate Red Sox Show with Hazel May. The Ultimate Red Sox Show, proper noun. Sundays only on Nesson. Eric Free with the New England Toyota Dealers game break after going 28 bats since career home run number 499. Alex Rodriguez hit number 500, hitting it off of Kyle Davies of the Royals. A Rod number 22 to get to 500. Yankees won 16-8. Don. Thank you, Eric. Back here at Safe Guild Field in Seattle. Let's check out the Red Sox starting lineup. Brought to you by your New England Dodge Dealers. The Red Sox have Dustin Pedroia leading off at second base with Kevin Euclid at first base. David Ortiz, a designated hitter. Manny Ramirez in left field. Mike Lowell at third base. Jason Veritek does the catching. J.D. Drew out in right field bat seventh with Coco Crisp in center batting eighth. And Julio Lugo at shortstop bats ninth. The starting pitcher is brought to you by Infinity, and on the mound tonight is Jared Washburn. Washburn is 8-7 and seven on the season, a 4.11 ERA. This is start number 22. His last three starts, no decisions, and the longest he's gone in those three appearances, six in the third innings. Last time out, only five innings against the Oakland Athletics. First time this year he's faced the Red Sox in his career, 3-3 three and three in 10 lifetime starts against Boston teams. Here's Dustin Pedroia to lead it off for the Red Sox as Pedroia leading off as he has been the last couple of days. He hits at 323, four homers, uh, 33 runs batted out as he takes strike one and we're underway. 73 degrees here tonight at Safeco Field in Seattle. And the roof has been open for the first two games of this series. We're expecting more great weather here tomorrow for the finale of the series, a day game from Seattle. And it has been a very comfortable, very low humidity. And great crowds. They sold out last night, expecting to do the same here tonight at Safe Goes. Pedroia pops it up, foul ground off third base. Beltre is there to make the catch for out number one. 
The Seattle defense is brought to you by the New England Ford dealers. They are fourth in the league with 58 errors in 107 games. Adrian Beltre at third base, Unesky Betancourt the shortstop, Jose Lopez at second, and Ben Broussard starts at first, Richie Sexton not in the lineup. Left to right, Raul Labanez, Ichiro in his six gold gloves, Jose Guillen in right field, and Kenji Jojima doing the catching. The umpiring crew, Mike Everett has the play tonight. Jerry Davis at first base. Alfonso Marquez at second and Chris Guccione, the umpire at third. Evan Euclid takes ball one from Jared Washburn. Red Sox tonight will see the fastball high 80s from Washburn, maybe low 90s. The curveball, a slider, and a changeup. Against the Red Sox with a 4.66 ERA, 10 starts against Boston. As he misses away, and it's two and one now to Euclid. It's in there for strike two, two and two. Euclid against left-handed pitchers, hitting at 3.03. Uh, two of the 11 home runs Kevin Euclid has off left handers. Rounds it foul towards the end of the Red Sox dugout. Still two and two. Well, the numbers have dipped a little bit for Kevin Euclid over the last 23 games. He is hitting at 203. Last night kind of jamming his thumb on a play at first base. But he's got a lot of injuries as this one is back up the middle and into center field. One out base hit and the first base runner of the night for the Red Sox. I talked to Euclid this afternoon in the Red Sox clubhouse. I thought it was wrist that he bent back uh, on a tag at first base, but he said actually it was his thumb. And he said it happens to him quite a bit on plays uh, at first base. But uh, no problem, as you can see, picking up the base hit here up the middle. So two for four last night for Euclid. Has the base hit in his first at bat tonight. Here's David Ortiz. 323, 19 homers at 67 runs batted in. He's homered three times in the last four contests as he takes strike one from Washburn. And a three hit performance here last night, including a home run, knocked in two. Strike two, and that's got Ortiz looking back at Mike Everett. And Ramirez waits on deck. Red Sox batting in the first. Washburn going away, trying to get Ortiz to chase. He doesn't. Ortiz, a 286 uh, hitter against Washburn in regular season play. You might remember the home run he had against Washburn in the playoffs against the Angels back at Fenway Park. Oh, yeah. Swing and a miss. Strikes out Ortiz. First strikeout for Jared Washburn. Two down. Looks like the slider from Washburn getting David Ortiz. The, the previous pitch was away. This breaking ball actually stays inside it looks like. So two down, Euclid at first base, and here's Manny Ramirez. And he's starting the night at 297, 18 homers, and 69 runs batted in. in the last four games, Manny just three for his last 17. And a hit here last night, one for four in the ball game. Back to back breaking balls to start off from Maris. I think it was the slider first pitch, a curveball on the second pitch, and very quickly Washburn ahead. 0-2 to Ramirez. Washburn, 32 years old from La Crosse, Wisconsin. This is a lane. It's one and two down to Manny. 
Not sure the first time he had pitched for any other team other than the Angels. So that is a free agent to prior to the 2006 campaign here in Seattle and his first year with the Mariners was a bit of a disappointment for him. He was 8 and 14 with a 4.67 ERA. Carves it foul off to the right and hangs it one and two. As far as baseball weather goes, you can't get a better night than this. I mean, just perfect conditions, temperatures today in the mid 70s, absolutely zero humidity. This is perfect baseball weather. Two and two to Manny. Kevin Eucle standing at first base with two down in the inning. Mike Lowell waits on deck. Not batting fifth again for the Red Sox tonight. J.D. Drew is in the starting lineup, but he bats seventh for Boston tonight. Swing and a miss. They elevated Tad, and Ramirez strikes out back-to-back -back Hayes for Washburn. Mariners coming up. Revive yourself at Cumberland Farms with new Diet Pepsi Max, an invigorating cola with zero calories. The last sound you hear before you step on the field. Click, clack. No more worries, right? Wrong. Almost one out of three Maine kids will become an addicted smoker by the time he or she enters young adulthood. One out of three. And periods of transition, such as leaving home for the first time, leave youth more vulnerable to tobacco marketing. Their target? Your daughter. Tobacco never quits. Learn how to prevent tobacco use. Visit TobaccoNeverQuits.com. Back at Safeco Field in Seattle, the Red Sox do not score in the first. Mariners coming up in the bottom of the first, and their lineup is brought to you by Rico. Ichiro at the top of their lineup and in center field with Jose Vidro, the designated hitter. Jose Guillen in right field. Raul Abanez in left back in there tonight. Adrian Beltre at third base. Ben Broussard gets a start at first base. Sexton is off as Kenji Jojima does the catching. Jose Lopez at second base bats eighth. And Uneski Betancourt, who had a big home run last night, he is the shortstop batting ninth. Starting pitcher is brought to you by Infinity, and for Boston tonight, it's Dice K. Matsuzaka. Well, Dice K. looking for his 13 win. He is 12 and 8 on the season. His start is number 23. 142 strikeouts puts him fifth in the American League, and making his fourth start of the year against the Seattle Mariners. His best coming last time out. Although they lost that game two to one in that game, Dice K. went eight innings, giving up three hits and only one earned run. Well, Ichiro has slid out of the top spot in batting average in the American League as he starts the day hitting at 351 with five homers and 45 runs batted in. Aglio Ordonez on top to begin the day hitting 352. Drop to second. Pedroia handles the high hop and Ichiro is gone. The Red Sox defense is brought to you by a Boston area Lexus dealers second in the league with 57 errors Mike Lowell at third base Lugo at shortstop Pedroia at second and Euclid at first left to right Ramirez crisp and drew Jason Veritek doing the catching for dice game. So one down Jose Vidro the designated hitter. Big strike one from dice K. 
Now we saw Richiro jump on that first pitch. He is now one for nine on the season against Matsuzaka. The 0 and 2. Pedro has hit in six straight games, hitting at 440 during the streak. And so far, he's two for eight against Daisuke Matsuzaka. We got a little taste this afternoon on the celebrity of Daisuke Matsuzaka in Japan. We were in the lobby when Daisuke was coming down the elevator to go to the ballpark, and there was this uh, couple of families grouped with their children and stuff. and. It was like seeing a rock star come out. I mean, they were just chasing him, trying to get an autograph. I think they finally did get one as he stepped out the door. But uh, it just goes to show that uh, you know a lot of people from Japan, what he means over there to that country, and uh, how it's, it was like you know, Jesus, like for us, like Lindsay Lohan coming down to the lobby. You know how crazy we would go. You know? Right, right. <laughs> well, they did. They went running across the lobby to get him as he finally did sign out there in the area but uh, yeah they're racing right across to get at dice game <laughs> was ahead 0 and 2 it's a full count now to Vidro 3 and 2 <laughs> to hold up but went around first strike out of the night for Matsuzaka two down and when you look at his games against the Mariners, uh, one of the toughest teams to strike out. He had four in his first start, only one in his second start, and eight last time. Fastball up and away, so a lot of fastballs early in this game from Matt Suzaka. So two down brings us to Jose Guillen, the right fielder. Misses inside. And 283 with 13 homers and 63 runs batted in. He sits safely in seven of the last nine games. So far, four for eight against Matsuzaka. He fouls this one back to the screen. Double and three RBIs against Matsuzaka. In a quiet game last night. He was 0 for 4. He struck out twice in the game and also grounded into a double play. Once again, you see Daisuke establishing the fastball early in this game tonight. Two and two. Again, leads the Mariners in RBI. He's got 63 on the season. And since June 1st, has hit up over 300 at 302. He bats now. Raul Labanya is back in the starting lineup tonight for Seattle. Had last night off. We saw Adam Jones. Another strike three. Back to back strikeouts for Matsuzaka. Down in order are the M's. We played one scoreless from Seattle. Thank you. How you doing? Oh, fine, thank you. Nine, please. Don't like stopping? Fly Southwest Airlines' new non-stop service from Manchester to Phoenix for just $99 one way. Purchased by August 26th. You are now free to move about the country. Obsessing over celebrity, that's wrong. Unless that celebrity is bacon. Introducing the Baconator from Wendy's. Six strips of bacon piled high atop two fresh, never frozen beef patties. Bacon! 
obsess a little. Wendy's. That's right. Because Geico sounds like gecko. That's it. That's the only reason I'm here. The fact is, if Geico sounded like some other animal, like, I don't know, a puma, sure enough, there'd be some adorable little cat sitting here talking about Geico's low rates. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. You can't even imagine the pressure. I mean, I've literally got, like, two seconds to capture your attention while simultaneously informing you that you could save hundreds on car insurance by switching to Geico. Quite frankly, I don't think it's even possible. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Now both pitches starting strong and Washburn back in the first inning with a man at first base gets uh, David Ortiz a strikeout on a slider. And then gets a fastball up and away from Manny Ramirez. So uh, Washburn with two strikeouts in the first inning. Daisuke also with two strikeouts in the first inning. Mike Lowell leading it off for the Red Sox here in the second inning. And it takes ball one from Washburn. It's Lowell, Veracek, and Drew to bat here in the second. Oh, 304 with 15 homers and 74 runs batted in. One in the hands and popped up right side. Jose Lopez makes the catch for the first out of the inning. So Lowell retired and it brings up Jason Veritek. Veritek hitting at 273, with nine homers and 45 runs batted in. Jason had a hit here last night, going one for three, walked in the game. Strike one in there to Veritek. Washburn has been in the big league since 1998 when he broke in with the Angels. Remember the Angels from 98 through the 2005 season. Oh, it strikes tonight. He's ahead 0 and 2. An 18 game winner back in 2002 with the Angels in 32 starts. Veritek shoots it down the right field line. Yen on the run will get there to make the catch for out number two. We talked about David Ortiz in the postseason. This is against uh, the Angels and Jared Washburn. ALDS game three. So there has been postseason matchups between uh, some of these Red Sox and Jared Washburn. the Angels World Championship he had kind of a tough go of it he was 0 and 2 with a 9.31 earned run average in the 2002 World Series As this is chopped down the first baseline decided to take it and drew is the final out at the top of the second we're scoreless after an inning and a half the first NASCAR stock car to reach 200 miles per hour the first minivan the first pickup with side curtain airbags. And now, Dodge introduces the industry's first lifetime powertrain warranty. It's the best warranty in the business. So come check out the best lineup of Dodge vehicles ever and grab life for a lifetime. Dunkin' Donuts knows it's not easy being a regular, everyday suburbanite. To prove it, we tried this experiment with supermodel Naomi Campbell. Made for the regular, everyday folks. New, freshly brewed iced tea. America runs on Dunkin'. New, freshly brewed iced tea. Try one in original peach or raspberry flavor today. People everywhere oh, are experiencing oh, it. It's You Bid Euphoria. Yes, these happy folks are heading to ubid.com for great deals on brand name home electronics and more. They bid and win without worry. Thanks to ubid's 100% fraud free auctions. So get up, go to ubid.com. Auctions are happening now. Save big, save safe.
Tonight's Chevy triple play contestant is Dave Gladstone of South Burlington, Vermont. Tonight, if our hometown team turns a triple play, Dave will win a Chevy HHR. For your chance to win a fuel-efficient Chevy car or truck, enter the Chevy triple play contest this month at Nesson.com. Now we head on to the last half of the second inning. Dice K with a pretty good first inning as you get a ground out back to back strikeouts. And he'll deal with Raul Abanez, Adrian Beltre, and Ben Broussard in the inning. Here comes Raul Abanez, who was not in the lineup last night. And he's back in there for the Mariners tonight. He's 0 for 5 in his career against Matsuzaka. Ball 254, six homers and 62 runs batted in. Got a tough homestand too. Only five for 27, a 185 average on this homestand for the Mariners. Strike one to Abanez. Almost 29 games without a home run. He hasn't hit one since the end of June. Side to even the count of one and one is a guy that last year hit 33 home runs. So far this season was six. Last year, 33 home runs, 123 runs batted in. Guys in both categories. Take strike two. Nice K going to the slider to get ahead of Abanya's one and two. Swing and a miss. That's three straight strikeouts for Matsuzaka. Well, I like this approach that Dice K has taken early in this game. A lot of fastballs. Again, all three strikeouts coming on the fastball to Vidro, to Guillen, and now Abanez. This fastball set up by a couple of off speed pitches, a couple of sliders. One down here in the second inning, and it brings up Adrian Beltre. 277, 16 homers, and 63 runs batted in. He's one for eight in his career against Dice K. And takes ball one from Matsuzaka. Two for four here that last night had an RBI and a stolen base. Sending Chris back at the wall. That ball is gone. Adrian Beltre is in his 17th home run of the season and put the Mariners on top one to nothing. Now Beltre got a fastball that appeared to be up about high as the lettuce on his big uniform top. And muscle that ball out to a center field. Veritek set up away, and you're going to see the fastball end up inside. And that is a 16th home run that uh, Dice K has given up this season. Broussard getting a start tonight at first base. The struggling Richie Sexton with the night off. As the breaking ball drops in there for a strike, and it's one and one. Yeah, Broussard got a big ovation when he was introduced. I don't think it's because of what he's done. It's because Sexton was not in the lineup. Sexton was really here in the booze here last night. And a couple of strikeouts. This is sent out towards right center field. Drew on the run. J.D. will get there. They're out number two. He'll get there in a hurry. Sard is retired and brings up Kenji Jojima. Jojima two for six against Dice K. Hits a 275, 12 homers, and 43 runs batted in.
last night. So one of the home runs that the Seattle Mariners hit as part of the victory. There's a big three run shot for Ben Court, but a two run home run for Georgia. But this was off Mike Timlin. As the Mariners secured the victory last night, they kind of turned it over to their bullpen, which has been very good. Tough hop, but handled by Lowell, and the throw in time to get Jojima. A home run for Adrian Beltre as the Mariners on top one to nothing. in theaters August 17th. Getting nickel and dime by your bank can crank up your blood pressure like a playoff game in New York. But with free interest checking from Sovereign Bank, there's no minimum balance to worry about. You get paid interest too, and you can use any bank's ATM in the country free. As far as this stock's concerned, Sovereign Free Interest Checking is the hardest working account in the nation. Back in Seattle where the Mariners have taken a one nothing advantage on the home run by Adrian Beltre it's one to nothing Seattle and Red Sox Nation has not had a lot to cheer about so far here in this series in Seattle or any of the games from Safeco Field so far this year. Local Crisp leads it off here in the top half of the third inning it'll be Crisp Lugo and Pedroia in the third. All the guys in the Red Sox lineup, the, the guy that's had the most success against Washburn, Coco Crisp, a 5.56 batting average with a home run. Hit last night, going one for four in the game. And that's now Lugo waits on deck. Out of the third, as Beltre was in on the grass, he plays it, throws out crisp. The Red Sox Foundation is auctioning off sold-out Green Monster ticket packages for Saturday, August 18th, against the Angels. You'll get to watch batting practice, meet Red Sox legends, have your picture taken with the World Series trophy, great food and drinks, and much more. The auction begins, excuse me, the auction benefits the Red Sox Foundation, so a portion of your bid is tax deductible. Visit RedSox.com where the auction is live and will end soon, so bid now. One down, six in a row, retired by Jared Washburn, and here is Julio Lugo to take strike one from Washburn. Go hitting a 222, six homers and 49 runs batted in. Had a base hit last night going one for four. We go hitting a 238 against left handed pitchers. It's an even split as far as his home runs go. He has six home runs, three off right handers, three off left handers. Seats and will off to the left. Now 
Now, plenty of activity in this beautiful city over the weekend. Of course, uh, all three games sold out here at Safeco Field against the Red Sox. The Blue Angels putting on their show tomorrow. We've seen them practice the last couple of days. One hop to dive by Lopez from his knees. The throw. Broussard can't scoop it out. Had it, and then it came in and out of the glove. But what a bid by Lopez at second base. Well, we've seen some defense out there between Betancourt and Lopez. Lopez going to his left. Dives, is able to make the play on the in-between hop, but then from his knees cannot get it to first base all the way in the air. Broussard can't hold on to it. Hops out of his glove, and Lugo safe. So base hit for Julio Lugo, and the second hit for Boston. Now one on, and Dustin Pedroia, the batter. Boston fouled out to the third baseman, Adrian Beltre, in the first inning. And two hits last night, going two for five. And has seven hits in his last three games. An average to begin the night at 323. Starting the game ninth in the American League with the 323. David Ortiz tied with him. That's a foul back off to the right. And it's one and two. Washburn a little bit tough to get a jump for against the Falugo. He fairly quick to home plate. Stop a tough hop. Betancourt plays it a second for one on the first double play. Red Sox are gone on the top of the third. We've played two and a half, one nothing Seattle. Louie, 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 it's complete. Can't be beat. Dresser, mirror, sleigh, bed, nightstand, and chest. 9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9. Louie, 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 it's complete. Can't be beat. Dresser, mirror, sleigh, bed, nightstand, and chest. 9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-
Dice Cave tonight trying to join Tim Wakefield and Josh Beckett as 13 game winners. CC Sabathia leads the American League with 14 wins. Dan Harron has 13, Carmona 13, Wang 13, Beckett, Lackey, and Wakefield. down to first base. Let's send it back to Boston and Eric Freed. Eric. All right, Don, thanks very much. Barry Bonds has done it. Home run number 755 came tonight in his first at bat in San Diego. Clay Hensley gave up the historic shot, which ties Bonds with Hank Aaron for number one on the all time home run list. Don. Thank you very much, Eric. Back here in Seattle, it is one to nothing. The Mariners on top from Safeco Field. And Ineski Bentcourt, the batter, Jose Lopez, hit by a pitch to begin the inning. This one looked into right field, in for a hit. Up to second base goes Lopez. As Bentcourt reaches, and the first two have reached here for the Mariners in the third. Bonds tying it tonight, both at 7.55. As you look at the all time leaders, can you imagine that tomorrow they had talked about giving him a day off anyway, and then he'll have the chance to go home to San Francisco to break that thing. I would imagine that's how that'll go. Oh, no question. I imagine he's probably already out of the game now, and uh, he will probably not play, I, I don't think, until he gets back to San Francisco. We saw uh, on the replay here at the Safeco Field, and the home run coming, of course, in San Diego at Petco. Uh, and it was very uncomfortable because the butt ceiling who is there was standing when he hit the home run but no clap. For the Washington Nationals at home four game series then three against the Pittsburgh Pirates back in San Francisco. Here's Ichiro with two on and nobody out here in the last half of the third inning. Ichiro grounded out to second base first time up. Interestingly, the commissioner Bud Selig was there and has been there over the last, I guess, better than a week now. As uh, we had him on earlier this season, and sort of not in the middle at that time, and really hadn't made his mind up as to whether or not he would go. And then they making the decision that uh, he needed to be there and was. Well, he was there. He was not there last weekend because he was at the Hall of Fame ceremonies in Cooperstown, but he has been following it this week and. It's going to be interesting uh, when he does break that, uh, how the commissioner handles it. Certainly the 2 0 pitch and missing 2 and 1. A 2 0 slider from uh, Matsuzaka down and into Ichiro. Ichiro looks like he might be getting a little frustrated with his advance against uh, Matsuzaka. Side three and one. And one for nine in his career against Matsuzaka here in the big leagues. The MVP of the 2007 All Star Game in San Francisco. Of course, had the inside the park home run and went three for three in the game. Oh. Strike two and a full count now. Now, yeah, let's see if they send the base runners with nobody out. First and second. Each row does not strike out very much, only 45 times on the year. Streak heading into tonight's action. He's 11 for his last 22. Xavier Drill waits on deck. Stasky has hit a batter and given up a single to begin this inning.
This will be the eighth pitch of the bat coming. Outside of first base, and we'll do it again as we check out the league leaders brought to you by Olympia Sports. We're in the category two strike hits, Ichiro, second only Apostle Polanco. It's a 367. Ichiro, a 296. Luis Castillo just recently traded away by the Twins. It's quite a gap between the number one and two guys. Yes. Polanco way up there in batting average of two strikes. Lopez at second base, Bentoncourt at first base, nobody out. Files off another. I have a feeling he could foul off just about anything at will until he gets something he likes. Now this is the part of the game that reminds me so much of Wade Box. Uh, with two strikes, it seems like he can foul off pitches he didn't want to put in play. And the bat extends into double figures. This is the tenth pitch. Chop left side. Lugo will go to third base with the play in front of him and the force out there as they get Jose Lopez, the lead runner, for the first out of the inning. Well, Don, I mentioned on the 3 2 count, I'm stunned they were not running the base runners, you know, because each row, not a guy that strikes out a lot. Now, if you have the runners going here, this is a base hit. There'll be no play anywhere. Instead, it ends up being a force out at third base. I don't quite understand why the run runners were not going with him at the plate. Red Sox get the first out at third base. One, two on, one away. And Jose Vidro, the battery, strikeout victim, his first time up. It's a foul down the left field line, back and out of play. Red Sox have lost nine straight games here. Last time they won, July 21st of 2006. Longest road losing streak ever in Seattle for the Red Sox. The previous high had been five. Done back uh, May through September of 1989. That was at the Kingdom. Well, if they win this game tonight, you and I will go scoop up some of the dirt and take it back as a souvenir. <laughs> Been some tough losses here too, some extra inning losses, all different kinds of things happening to the Red Sox in this streak. Red Sox, in fact, are just eight and twenty here, beginning in May of 2002. And have not won a season series here in Seattle since 1999. See the count now one and two to Vidro. Ziggy in on deck as the Mariners bat here in the bottom of the third inning. Already on top one nothing. High chopper. Ruthless will play it. Nice kick covers and it's not in time. Well, it took forever for the ball to come down on the chop. El Vidro now with a seven game hitting streak. Euclid's just uh, begging this ball to get down in a hurry so he could give it to uh, Matsuzaka covering first base, but it seemed like it was never going to come down. Big high bounce. And he had to play it on the one hop. Underhand flip, but too light to get Vidro. So a base is loaded jam now for Matsuzaka and one out. Jose Guillen struck out looking in the first inning. One of three strikeouts tonight for Daisuke Matsuzaka. Daisuke backs off. Yeah, the 309 hitter with the bases loaded has three grand slams to his credit. Strike one from Dice Cam. 
Ed was not pleased with home plate umpire last night. Struck out a couple of times looking and not seem to be pleased here on the strike call from Mike Everett. throwing that fastball by him at 95 miles an hour. Struck him out on a similar pitch back in the uh, first inning. This is filled with Mariners. Ben Court at third base. Ichiro at second base. Pedro at first base with one out in the inning. Strikes out for the second time tonight. Four strikeouts on the night and a big one there by Dice K with bases loaded. All four on fastballs. Vidro and Guillen back in the first inning. Then the fastball to Abanya is to start up the second inning and now the bases loaded strikeout to Guillen. The second time he's got him tonight on the high fastball. So a big out right there for Dice came out Suzaka second out of the inning. Base is still loaded for Raul Labanez who struck out in the second inning. He's following the first pitch off to the left. And is in his second stint with the Seattle Mariners he broke into the big leagues with the Mariners back in 1996 and went away to the Kansas City Royals for three seasons and now Returning here to Seattle for his fourth year. <laughs> Two down, bases loaded for the Mariners. Grand slam last season against the Red Sox has four in his career. A 356 batting average with the bases loaded. Court at third base, Ichiro at second base, Vidro at first base. With two down here in the last half of the third inning. back there and Ichiro and the Mariners are gone in the third as Dice K gets out of the major jam. One nothing Mariners. Any more strokes and this score will be as high as my phone bill. Man I hate the phone company. Something just dawned on me Jim. Cable phone service has new technology and cost you way less than you're paying now. <laughs> Great over there where will you be when it dawns on you cable is revolutionizing phone service just like it did with TV and internet cable phone clearly a better choice it's the Chevy model year-end event and to kick it off we've just announced the best offer ever on the all-new Silverado 0% APR for 60 months on half-ton extended and crew cabs for well-qualified buyers Silverado has the best available highway fuel economy of any full-size pickup and a warranty that's better than Ford better than Toyota that 0% for 60 months on our most popular Silverado models. Shop and compare at MainDriveChevy.com. It takes more than great furniture to make your home look good. It takes great design. Hi, I'm Allison from Dorsey Furniture, and for almost 20 years, I've been helping people create rooms they can be proud of. And now, my interior design services are available to you right here at Dorsey Furniture. So. Call today to schedule your free design consultation, and together we'll create the room you'll love to be in. Personalized design with you in mind, only at Dorsey Furniture, Route 1A Holden, open seven days a week. Boston Red Sox baseball and Nesson is brought to you by Pepsi. Olympia Sports, the official sporting goods retailer in the New England Sports Network. And by Dunkin' Donuts. 
No, one nothing Mariners lead as we head to the top half of the fourth inning. Dice came out Suzaki getting out of the major jam in the third. Yeah, bases loaded, one out. It gets Guillen on a high fastball, then Abanez with a slider. Abanez going to the opposite field of Manny Ramirez, and Dice Gay leaves the bases loaded. Well, Kevin Euclid leads it off here in the top half of the fourth inning. As Jared Washburn had to wait a while and did not get any additional runs in the exchange. Euclid has one of two Boston hits tonight as he singled to center field in the first inning. Washburn had a 17 minute wait. The Mariners could not push across another run. And Euclid now two and one. Center field, Ichiro is there to make the catch for the first out of the inning. Let's check in with Tina Servacio. There are different factors why Daisuke has dominated Ichiro so far this season. And if you talk to Jason Baratek, he says it's simple. Daisuke is making his pitches and executing well versus Ichiro. But if you talk to the Japanese media, they believe there are reasons far beyond a pitcher-batter matchup. Even in Japan, Daisuke had better numbers versus Ichiro than any other hitter. And for the both of them, their matchup carries far more meaning than competing athletes. Daisuke has said many times, Ichiro-san has a special existence to me. It's a Japanese and he's saying meaning they have mutual respect beyond the game of baseball and because Matsuzaka competes with that mindset the Japanese baseball fan believes that's why he has been so successful versus Ichiro both in the major leagues as well as back in Japan. Thanks very much Gina. that's pretty interesting you know we have watched these two go head to head uh, of course the first time at Fenway Park when uh, Ichiro came in and Daisuke Matsuzaka matched up against him and it's amazing the amount of me that follows Ichiro around and following of course uh, Dice came around, he put it together, and it is a, an amazing contingent. And the battles have been very one sided so far. David Ortiz batting with one down in the inning. Struck out his first time, this time will pop it a foul off to the left. Well, I would guess that if you gave each year a 100 at bats against Dice K, he would probably hit over 300 just like he does everybody else. That's just my feeling. I mean, he. He, you know, didn't have good success in Japan so far. It was what is he one for ten against them? Uh, one for uh, yeah, one for ten so far this season. Opposite field, Ibanez running won't get there as it drops in. Ortiz is thinking about two. He bobbled it for a second, and the throw is not going to be in time. Probably go as a base hit and error, I would think, because if Abanez comes up with this, I doubt Ortiz is going to try second base. It's a slider that David takes to the opposite field, and a good sign that the legs are feeling pretty good. Here's the bobble, and once that happens, Ortiz gets in a scoring position. It is indeed a single and an error. It gets David Ortiz to second base. Well, the Red Sox for the first time in the game have a base runner at second. There's Manning with one out. Well, struck out swinging back in the first inning. One of two K's tonight for Jared Washburn. And they came back to back as he got Ortiz and Ramirez to strike out back in the first inning. has not won since July 4th he did that at Kansas City since then a loss and three no decisions including last time out against the Oakland A's and a five inning effort giving up five runs three of them were earned so he wins on the season but has not won since July the 4th Ramirez now three and oh First base goes Ramirez. First walk given up by Washburn. 
Covidian is a proud sponsor of the Boston Red Sox and the Red Sox Foundation, helping them raise money for life-saving cancer research. So two on, one away here in the top half of the fourth inning. It brings up Mike Lowell. Popped out to second base, first time up. Good strike one from Washburn. Strike high for Washburn is seven. Did that against the Detroit Tigers in an eight to seven loss back on the 13th of July. Up and away, and Jojima is going to come out of the crouch to grab that one. And more than any other running, it seems like in this inning, Washburn's getting underneath a lot of pitches, and especially his changeup. This is a changeup. He gets underneath and almost sails away from Jojima. at second base Manny Ramirez at first base with one out here in the top of the fourth and Sox trailing one to nothing inside two and two Jordan has been all over the place this inning nothing has gotten by him yet Field line that'll make its way foul again. Some very tech waiting on deck. One down here in the fourth. Oh, hitting at 315 this season against left handed pitching. A foul back to the backstop, still two and two. Pretty hard here in the fourth. Up to 60 pitches. There's some big news about the Boston Globe classifieds. Now they're all together in one easy to use pull out section all week long. Now it's easier than ever to find a home, buy a car, land a job, or even find that perfect pet. The new Boston Globe classifieds don't let an opportunity pass you by. Check them out every day in the Boston Globe. And down David Ortiz at second base, Manny Ramirez at first base. Pops it up. Into a fly rule as Bentoncourt comes on to make the grab for out number two. For the top nine countdown of all things Sox, don't miss Granite City Electric Ultimate Red Sox show. Hazel May looks back at the big deadline deal that landed Eric Gagne and also relives some infamous trades over the years. Plus, Sox reliever Manny Del Carmen is the focus of the hot corner segment. That's tomorrow at 12.30 and then again at 2.30, right before our pregame coverage begins.
Well, a sellout crowd here at Safeco Field in Seattle for the second straight night, 46,313. Listen, Veritek, the batter. He takes strike one. It'll be kind of a high strike, and Veritek can't believe it. Just a little bit low below the letters here called the strike. You don't see that call very often, but uh, it is within the legal strike zone. Again, but inside also, and it's one and one. Check fly to right first time up. He's batting with Ortiz at second base and Ramirez at first base. Time against the Red Sox in 10 starts against Boston. Joey those coming when he was in an Angels uniform. Outside edge, three and one. Tried to go back though with the curveball that time and just missing the outside corner. You see Perzik shaking his head right away. No, it's not a strike. D. Drew returning to the Red Sox starting lineup tonight, waiting on deck. Yeah, Countdown. Veritek taps it foul. Red Sox have had a base run in every inning except for the second inning when they went in order. First time they've had a base runner at second base in the game. First and second, two down. We'll be off with the pitch. Drives it down the left field line, and that's going to one hop the wall. Over is Ibanez. Ortiz will score. Ramirez going to try and score the throw from Bentcourt. It is not in time. Red Sox take the lead. Well, two tough at bats put on there by Lowell, who eventually popped up, and then Veritek. Veritek gets the fastball inside and shoots it down the line. And I'll tell you what, give Danny credit here. He was running hard all the way. That's the only way DeMarlo Hale could score him from first base. There's the line drive down to the left field corner. You know Ortiz is going to score. Here's the relay. Manny coming in to throw up the line, and Ramirez gets home plate with the hand. And he was going hard right from contact on first base on that 3 2 count. Well, a huge two run double here with two outs in the inning. And the Red Sox on top now 2 to 1 as J.D. Drew stands in. He'll ground it out to first base first time up. Back in the starting lineup and tonight facing a lefty, Jared Washburn, who gets the strike in there to Drew. And not a guy that he's uh, faced a lot, but does uh, not have a hit against. 0 for 7 now in his career. JD against lefties this season, inning at 207. He does have two home runs this year off left handed pitching. And down 0 and 2. Lined out to begin the inning. Ortiz singled to left. Ramirez walked. Lowell popped out after a nine pitch at bat. Then Veritek drives in a pair. It's double to left field. As the Red Sox take a 2 1 lead. The 
White Sox who lead the majors in walks going to walk this inning for Manny Ramirez the first walk given up by Washburn. Strikes out. But the Red Sox come up with two runs and take a 2 1 lead after three and a half. Hey, boss. Do we have Aflac? Nah, we have something else. But if you're hurt and miss work, does it pay cash like Aflac does? Nah. Or let you spend it any way you want, like for gas and groceries? Nah. Or help with everyday bills like Aflac does? Nah, nah, nah. There's only one Aflac. Ask about it at work. Nice try, boss. Nah, Aflac. Take these to Rogers and Lewis. Newman's own organic sliced coffee from McDonald's. Now even harder to resist in vanilla, hazelnut, or our new limited time flavor, caramel. How would you like to run a business of your own from the comfort of your own home? It's not as crazy as it sounds. I made over $100,000 a year from my home. I just made a down payment for our vacation home working part-time. Yeah, you have to be crazy to visit this website and find out how to start your home business. Crazy like a fox. Log on and get your success kit. I made $5,000 yesterday. Crazy? I don't think so. Log on now. The story of the 1967 American League champion Red Sox is now available in a double DVD set. Impossible to forget relives that impossible dream season and is available at Walmart. Pick up your copy today. Two to one Red Sox on top now as we head to the last half of the fourth inning. The pitching line is brought to you by Nissan. Number six pitches for Daisuke Matsuzaka. Just the one run given up. He has struck out four, not walked anybody yet. Struck out Jose Guillen twice tonight. And a 19 minute wait as the Red Sox came up with two runs in the top half of this inning. First guy he deals with uh, took him out of the yard. First time up, Adrian Beltre, hitting his 17th home run of the year. Opposite field shot out towards right center. He makes the grab for out number one. That's a long way out to those gaps here at Safeco Field. 388 to that area where Manny's roaming to make the play on that fly ball. Never really got to the warning track. Beltre's got that kind of power. 48 home runs with the Dodgers in his last season in LA in 2004. Those numbers have been down. Had just 19 home runs in his first year in Seattle. A disappointment for the Mariners after coming here. 25 last year. And the home run tonight just his 17th of the season. There's Ben Brassard. Line to right, first time up. Brassard, the former Cleveland Indian. One and one. So for three against Matsuzaka with a couple of strikeouts. Opposite field hooking down the left field line. He didn't run right away. As it goes into the corner, Ramirez over to play it. The side will still get to second base. And he thought at first it was going to go foul, so he didn't run, but now he does and easily gets to second base. With a one out double. Yeah, very late swing by Brassad. I don't think he had any idea where that baseball uh, left. But he made contact. And, and he looks down and he realized that ball's going to be in fair territory and he takes off with a two base hit. It's almost like when he made contact, he had kind of lost sight of where the baseball was. Oh, 
one out double and here is Kenji Jojima rounded out to third base first time up. Jojima, 30 years old. Last year had 147 hits. League set an American League record for hits by a rookie catcher. Making the mark set by Angels catcher Buck Rogers back in 1962. 146 hits in his first year in the majors. Side 2 0. We've had one change up or a splitter in this game yet from Dice K. Oh, it's two and one. Last year in his first year in the big leagues at 18 home runs, 76 runs batted in. Rookies and homers and in RBIs. And this year now 12 home runs so far, 43 runs batted in. Strike and it's two and two. Get it, Lugo, and he'll pick it up and not throw it, reaching his judgment. A little surprised to see Lugo not make an attempt on a throw on this. I thought when he charged it, he had a chance at first base. He elects not to make the throw, and then checks Broussard at third base. Couple of strange hit the opposite field hit by Broussard who had no idea where the baseball was now the infield single by Jojim. First and third one down for Jose Lopez. Lopez was hit by a pitch his first time up. with runners in scoring position this season. And it starts against Seattle. Sorry at third base, Georgia at first base, one down. Been scoring a lot of runs lately for Matsuzaka. They have scored two runs or less while Matsuzaka has been in the game in 10 of his last 12 starts. Giving him a combined 25 runs of support in those 12 games. On the ground, left side. Oh, the second for one on the first. Double play. Then to come at a better time for the Red Sox. Lowell got it and got rid of it in a hurry. We played 4 2 1 Boston.
That's why Southwest Airlines has 12 daily nonstop flights from Manchester and Providence to Philadelphia, so you can always catch a later flight. And you can count on us to get you there with our convenient nonstop flights and on-time service. You are now free to move about the country. We're America's largest refiner, and some of the vehicles we fuel don't travel on roads. For those that do, we make some of the cleanest gasoline on the planet, and every drop is performance guaranteed. And our employees contribute over 200,000 hours a year in our communities. We know you probably don't think about these things when you think of Valero. That's okay. Just as long as when you do think of us, you think of this. Valero. The energy to take you anywhere. Daisuke has been able to get out a couple of big jams here, back to back innings. Now look at Veritek. They want the high fastball like they're going for the punch out. They want him to chase the ball that's out of the zone. Very seldom on a pitch this high do you get a ground ball. But they get it. Lopez gets on top of the high fastball and then goes uh, the cost the ground ball to Lowell around the horn for the double play. But the Red Sox actually trying to go for a strike out there and they get the double play. This one just fouled down the first baseline. Looked like it may come back for a moment as Coco Crisp leads it off in the top half of the fifth inning. It's Chris Belugo and Pedroia. The Red Sox on top, two to one. Red Sox getting two runs in the fourth inning. Jason Veritek with two outs driving in both. Jared Washburn. Two to Chris Ben, it's 0 and 2. Washburn so far with three strikeouts tonight. Sending it to center field, playable for each of those there to make the catch for the first out. Tomorrow afternoon, beat the Heat at Showcase Cinemas for another Nesson HD game night. Red Sox live. Catch the Red Sox and the Seattle Mariners live at 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon in Nesson HD from the cool comfort of a Showcase Cinema Theater. Visit Nesson.com for a season schedule and a list of participating theaters. I understand it's been very warm back in Boston in the mid 90s, so. Good chance to cool off tomorrow and watch the Red Sox from a cinema. One down for Julio Lugo. Reached on the infield hit first time up. So four Boston hits tonight. We're calling it off down the left field line and we'll do it again here with the count of one and one. This time behind DeMarlo Hale in the third base coach's box, one and two. And since the break, Red Sox has a team hitting at 292. Second in the American League in runs. You have the Yankees. Yankees have had 172 runs since the break. It's almost like they're scoring 172 runs a game. It's been unbelievable. <laughs> Figure that offense was going to come around sooner or later. After some very slow starts, really, Alex Rodriguez, the only one who was off to a torrid beginning, although Posada's had a very good year consistently throughout, has popped up. 
From third base comes Beltre. Also from first, Broussard, and it's Broussard on a tough play as he had to climb the mound as making the catch not easy, and he handles out number two. Yeah, anytime any infielder has to climb the mound to catch a pop up, it is not an easy play, and Broussard almost loses his balance. Now, why can't Washburn make this play? It's right there for him, a nice, easy play. But no, they have to have two other guys come in, and one almost falls over the mound. You know how I feel about that, Don. I know, and I agree with you. I don't get it. I mean, they're out there shagging fly balls all during every, batting practice. Every, every day. day. <laughs> That's the Bedroya bats with two down and the base is empty. Hey, talking about it, Ron, on the day he hits his 500th because Bonds ties Hank Aaron. And many people feel that A-Rod has the chance to go by Bonds at some point in his career. Well, A-Rod was able to do it at Yankee Stadium. Well, certainly, as young as he is, has that opportunity. This, does. this is to center field is Ichiro back there again. And it is a 1 2 3 fifth inning for Jared Washburn halfway through this one Red Sox on top two to one. Having a half ton with the most leg room and a fancy rear seat is great. But truckers want to know if it's still got some go. truck left in it. Bar pull 6,400 pounds of dead weight, towing 10,100 pounds, is a walk in the park. Hello, Dolly. Available on the Tundra Crew Max, the truck that's changing it all. I am your idea. Color me. Get me noticed. Make me shout. And stand out. Give me Rico color. That always works. I am your idea. Make me brighter. Make me shine. I am your idea. Get me in there. Make it happen in flying colors. It's you and me, and here we go with Rico. Fran, I love what you've done with your bathroom. What's that? It's a walk-in tub. It's made life so much easier after my surgery, and it's good for Harold's arthritis. He loves the hydrotherapy jets. And Marge, this is an indulge bath It gives you more for your money. Even the installation was included. It's so roomy, and that seat even fits my bob. <gasps> Harold? Oh, Marge? indulge bath walk-in tubs. Call now and save. Join Theo Epstein, Kay Hanley, Peter Gammons, and a host of hot musical acts, including John Legend, on Friday, August 24th. The third annual Hot Stove Cool Music the Fenway Sessions benefits a foundation to be named later, part of the Red Sox Foundation. For tickets, visit RedSox.com or call 877-RED-SOX-9. Red Sox on top two to one as we head to the last half of the fifth inning. This game, Matsuzaki has thrown 59 pitches through the first four innings. Zaneski, Bencourt, Ichiro, and Jose Vidro to bat here in the bottom of the fifth. Bencourt taking strike one and single to right field first time up. Mariners are out hitting the Red Sox five to four as they come to bat here in the bottom of the fifth. with a 280 batting average as a team. Yankees on top 289 to begin the day. Then the Tigers and Angels. Mariners fourth. Red Sox have slipped to fifth, hitting a 277 as a team. Popped up foul off to the right. One and two. Mariners with a 4.56 earned run average. And 11th in the American League as a pitching staff. Of course, Red Sox on top. At 3.76. I think if you have to worry about the Mariners for the most part, I think their bullpen, as we've seen, a very good, a young bullpen. But it is a rotation that seems to be one concern for John McLaren and this Seattle Mariners team. Maybe the difference between them and the Angels and perhaps the rest of the elite in the American League. This one is 
popped up foul back and out of play. I'm happy to report, Don, that the monitor last night that was hit uh, is okay. For some odd reason, it went purple last night, and, but today the crew turned it on and it was okay. So that's I feel better about that because that's the first time it was ever in use out there. I felt responsible for breaking it. Yeah, you were the reason it was out there. I mean, but it's okay today. I guess once they shut it off, and they got some rest. Uh, it's the breaking ball in there for strike three, fifth strikeout for Matsuzaka. Looks like the slide of that time from Dice K to pick up the strikeout against Betancourt. I mentioned this uh, this team, the Seattle Mariners, the toughest to strike out, but the Matsuzaka pitching up, picking up quite a few tonight. If the three guys in the top ten is tougher to strike out, Bidro, Jojima, and Betancourt. One down for Ichiro, who is 0 for 2. He takes strike one from Matsuzaka. Ichiro is grounded out second, reached on a fielder's choice. So the flash bulbs going off on every pitch. Dosuke Matsuzaka to Ichiro. And the first baseline just foul. Ichiro did not run, and the count is one and two. Good baseball at home. They've won 24 of their last 32 home games. And in their home winning percentage of 649 at 37 and 20 is second only to the Angels. Jack Court Stealing Sweepstakes is back again for another season. Visit lojack.com slash court stealing for details and to enter to win. Lojack, the only stolen vehicle recovery system operated by the police. One down, base is empty for the Mariners here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Let's get ahead of each of a one and two. Two down. If I'm not mistaken, I would say that that's the first splitter that Daisuke has thrown in the game tonight, and it results in a ground ball right back to him. See if it's a changeup grip or a split grip. Looks like more of the changeup that time, and uh, just that swing, just tapping the ball back to Matsuzaka. So two down for Jose Vidro, who's one for two tonight. He has struck out and reached on an infield hit. And taps it foul over by the Mariners dugout. So Vidro coming over from the Washington Nationals. A deal for outfielder Chris Snelling. Time All Star started the All Star game back in 2002. And 24 home runs for Montreal Expos back in 2000. There's only three so far this season. So bounces that one in, and it's one and two.
two and two now to Jose Vidro. Inside the full count, Daisuke had been ahead 0 and 2. But it's 3 and 2 now. Vidro is batting at 440 over his last six starts, raising his season average nine points from 299 to 308. Consecutive multi hit games. He's one for two in the ball game tonight. He had two hits last night, going two for four in the first game of the series. First base on ball surrendered by Matsuzaka. That was Bob Storrs easy as one, two, three strikeout. Bob Storrs is your destination for Red Sox gear, top brand footwear, and casual clothing for the entire family. Bob Storrs, the official apparel store of the Boston Red Sox, and of course, the end last time, the one, two, three. Three pitches to get him, the slider, the fastball. And the fastball upstairs. Twice he's got Guillen tonight, but that was the one, two, three back in the third. Here's Jose Guillen, who has struck out twice. Daisuke's fastball tonight quite often at 94 95 that's a little bit higher than what we've seen it uh, in past the games for him a little more zip to it five strikeouts for him so far tonight Strike out a high is 10 done twice. Two and two. has not been happy with the, either the home plate umpires in the first two games of this series. Well, it seems like any strike that's been called on him in this series, he's not been happy about. He wasn't happy about Adam Jones being called to the big leagues either. <laughs> Although he said in the face, he didn't take it back, but he said that, you know, we welcomed him and welcomed him to the family, but he still didn't agree with the move. Jones had a very nice game here last night, not in the starting lineup tonight. Zabani is back and left for Seattle. Inside three and two. Well, accounts, you better get used to having Adam Jones around. He appears to be a very good player and uh, part of the future here for the Seattle Mariners. time in the game tonight. Six K's for Matsuzaka. We played 5-2-1 Boston. Here we can see that the structure of price variance is going to shift unilaterally according to daily expenditures and profit margins. And here on slide 88 of 250, we have a contribution margin.
That's why Southwest Airlines has nine daily nonstop flights from Manchester and Providence to Chicago Midway. So you can always catch a later flight. And you can count on us to get you there with our convenient nonstop flights and on-time service. You are now free to move about the country. Get the hottest Akon ringtones on your phone now. Grab your cell phone, text the code of the song to number 40100. Text AK40 for I Wanna Love You. Text AC40 for Smack That. Send it to number 40100. Akon ringtones on your phone now. Text AK40 for I Wanna Love You. Text AC40 for Smack That. Send it to number 40100. Just wait a little bit for the reply message and then follow the instructions to download now. Welcome to Foxwoods. Can I take those for you? Hey, we're about to break you out. Everybody get loose now. Everyone has a wild side. Let yours out at Foxwoods. Everybody break out. Everybody get loose now. Everybody break out. Would you like these back? No. No, we're, we're good. good. Everybody break out. Meet your wild side at Foxwoods. There's a great new look to the Red Sox Nation program in 2007. It has new rewards, gifts, and unique ticket opportunities. Become part of the global fan base that has made their citizenship in Red Sox Nation official. Visit RedSox.com today and join up today because you have a chance, if you are a Red Sox Nation member, to win four dugout seats provided by Tom Warner for the August 19th Sunday game against the Angels. So a good game, the Angels good ball club. Haven't signed yet. Become a member. Sign up now. You still have a chance to win those tickets. Devin Eucal is leading it off here for the Red Sox in the top half of the sixth inning. Eucal is single in the first inning. Lined out to center field in the fourth. A story today that uh, Tom Warner was actually in a Wally Wally in yes. uh, the <laughs> last homestand. It was poking around with Larry Lupino. Had a little fun, yeah. I don't think Larry thought it was fun there for no. a while. <laughs> I can't imagine that he would. Was that that hot day game we had? The was it Bobby Door Day? I think it might have been. I'm not sure. I thought it was nice and comfortable Ooh. in that outfit. He sends it out to center field. Each of on the run won't get there. Trying to cut it off, he does, but by the time he stops, he's on the track, and it's a double. The second hit of the night for Kevin Euclid. Now, Euclid's back to back two hit games, two for four last night, two for three down tonight. As he finds some green grass that uh, each row can't catch up to. Next to backhanded play before he gets to the wall, but Kevin Euclid is in with the double of lead off here in the sixth inning. And 58 two strike hits they lead the American League. Both of his hits tonight coming with two strikes. Ortiz batting and pops it up foul on the run is Beltre over by the seats and he runs out of room. David Ortiz back in the first inning a slider that was down and in uh, no contact and then the next at bat in the fourth inning the slider away out over the plate and Ortiz to the opposite field for the base hit. So the first slider was down he struck him out the second one was up he got the hit. Ortiz with three home runs in his last four games. Last night hitting the 209th career home run as a designated hitter. Moved him past Jose Canseco, fifth most on the all time DH list. It's almost a totally different stance for David Ortiz over the last uh, what, three or four days. Almost straight up and down, not in that crouch at all that we normally see him in. So usually you see him a little bit more spread out than that and also crouched over but uh, not the case. The right 
field. On the move is Guillen, and he can't make the catch as he trapped it. Euclid had to wait to throw. Sales and ends up in the seats. Euclid will be given the plate. And the Red Sox take a 3-1 lead. Well, Guillen has a very strong arm, but not always the most accurate arm. And boy, he lets this one fly, and it flies one hop into the stands. Well, it's going to be a base hit for Ortiz as he caught that ball in the backhand and the run's going to score on the air. Look at this ball. Just emails everybody and ends up about 10 rows back. So the air charge again that allows Euclid to score as David Ortiz takes second, takes third and on the air. He took second on the throw, third on the throwing air. Now 90 feet away from another run with the infield in all the way around for the Mariners. Five errors now for Jose Guillen. Ramirez sends it down the right field line. Guillen with a long run. That'll make its way foul. And he struck out in the first inning, walked and scored in the fourth inning. Field of Banez on the run won't get there. It's by him to the track and the wall as Ortiz will jog home and give the Red Sox a 4-1 advantage as Manny Ramirez drives in his 70th run of the season. Now three balls hit very hard this inning. Euclid's is double, then Ortiz is base hit, and now Ramirez with the double. He finds the gap in left center field on the fastball. It's a little bit up from Washburn. So Manny now tied for 10th with RBI on the season. Tied with Sammy Sosa of the Texas Rangers. Tim Chavez, the pitching coach. With Ramirez at second base, nobody out. It's happened pretty quickly here. Double, a single, another double. And two runs in. It's now four to one Boston. Action for the first time in the Seattle pen. As Ryan Roland Smith is up. Boston Red Sox baseball on Nesson is brought to you by Halloween and theaters everywhere, August 31st. Core is light. And by your local Lincoln Mercury dealers. Red Sox on top, four to one, as they try to end what is a nine game losing streak here at Safeco Field in Seattle. With Lowell, 0 for 2. He has popped up twice in the game, popping up to the second baseman, Lopez, in the second, then popping out to the shortstop. Ineski Bentoncourt in the fourth inning. Pops it up down the left field line as Beltre running into foul ground. Ibanez makes the catch in foul ground for the first out of the inning. Well, it's tough to see the baseball right now, too. It's a twilight here in uh, Seattle. And well, if you take your eye off the baseball right now, it's very hard to pick up. I lost it. <laughs> I took my eye off and I couldn't see it again. The Banyas did not and he makes the catch. So one away. Ramirez remains at second base and here's Jason Veritek. Fly to right and knocked in a pair of runs with a double in the fourth inning. And two RBIs with two outs in the fourth.
ball center field Ichiro going back still going and he'll make the catch on the track and he tags and then started to bluff as if he was headed to third and stopped as Veritek gives that one a long ride out to a deep left center field but Ichiro back there to make the grab. That's the right play at second base by Ramirez. First of all, a nice play by each row as he's got to go a long way to make this catch. Now, if there's nobody out in the inning, if you're Ramirez, you've got to be tagging up because you want to make sure you get to third. If there's one out, you play it halfway. If the ball drops in, you're going to score. If not, you're still in scoring position at second base with the two outs. So that ball played correctly by Manny. It doesn't look good. But that is the proper play in that uh, out count. So two down Ramirez still at second base the 1 0 to Drew. There's ball 2 2 and 0. AD is grounded out to first base tonight and struck out swinging his old for 2 against the lefty Jared Washburn. Was four for his last 31. To right and in for a hit for J.D. Drew. Ramirez being stopped as the throw from Guillen is right on target. He would have been out. Guillen, of course, with a great arm. But Ramirez stopped at third base by DeMarlo Hale on the base hit by J.D. Drew. Now Drew jumps on a breaking ball from Washburn, picks up the base hit, but a good job by uh, Guillen in right field to charge the ball. And of course, so you see DeMarlo Hale trying to stop Manny, and it's a good thing he did. He would have been out by about uh, probably 20 feet. So first and third, two down. Here's Coco Crisp, who's 0 for 2 in the game tonight. On the ground, right at Benton Court, he gobbles it up, goes the easy way to second to conclude the inning. Red Sox tack on two more runs, take a 4 1 advantage after five and a half. Do you want to own a brand new computer and improve your credit at the same time? If you have less than perfect credit, bad credit, or no credit at all, and want to improve your credit, Guaranteed Consumer Funding can assist you in obtaining the high quality computer you want and need, while at the same time help you build or rebuild your credit. Here's how it works. Bad credit? No credit. No problem. There's no credit check, so you will not be turned down. If you have a checking or savings account and can afford weekly payments of just $29.99, then you are already approved for a brand new Dell, HP, or other name brand computer. Guaranteed. So give us a call now to have your brand new computer shipped right to you. And we'll add over $700 in premiums and upgrades and an MP3 player for free. And with some Select models will throw in a free printer. Give us a call today to get the computer of your dreams, and we'll help you get back on track to improving your credit. Guaranteed Consumer Funding, your credit solution for quality electronics. Here's a smart way to handle the other green monster. Sovereign Business Owner Banking. You can get free business checking, free business online banking. Your first order of checks free and Sovereign's best personal checking too, all free. Which means nobody in the neighborhood hustles harder to be a small business bank than Sovereign. Immediately following tonight's game at Sports Desk with Catherine Tappen, presented by FW Webb, who invites you to be a Sports Desk anchor for a day. Visit Nesson.com for more details. You'll see a recap of Pro Football's Hall of Fame induction ceremony for the class of 2007, including Michael Irvin and Thurman Thomas. Plus, a day, day one of the Pan Mass Challenge is complete, and we'll take you to the Sturbridge for the start of the race. That's Sports Desk with Catherine Tappen tonight, immediately following the game. We're here at Safeco Field in Seattle. Don Orsillo, Jerry Remy, and Tina Sebastio bringing you Boston Red Sox baseball in high definition on Nesson. Mariners struck first tonight with a run in the second inning. They left the bases loaded in the third inning. Red Sox scored two in the fourth, two in the sixth, and Boston now on top, four to one. 
Two RBIs for Jason Veritek and RBI for Manny Ramirez. The other one scoring on a throwing error. Jose Guillen, the right fielder. As Ramirez leads it off against Dice K here in the bottom of the sixth. Banias uh, struck out swinging and fly to left. He's 0 for 2. It's in there for a strike and it's 1 and 1 to Banias. Four pitchers thrown tonight by Dice K as he works in the bottom of the sixth inning. This will be a splitter. Not too many tonight. A couple of change ups, maybe one splitter from Dice K. He's basically done most of his work tonight with his fastball and his uh, slider. The Dice K has hit tonight, hit Jose Lopez in the third inning. Yeah, both have been on off speed pitches. Uh, Lopez was on a a cut fastball or a slider. This looked, uh, looked like either the changeup or the splitter. Change up grip. And he bounces it. So 11 batters. Tied the third most in the American League. Mr. Verlander leading the league with 14 hit batters. As Adrian Beltre stands in and takes ball one. Beltre hit his 17th home run of the year back in the second inning. Made another bid his second time up long fly ball to left field, but Manny Ramirez was back there to make the catch. Series and it's Josh Beckett on the mound for the Red Sox tomorrow. 13 and five matched up against Miguel Batista. It's 11 and seven. Four o'clock start time back on the East Coast. Well, Dice K drawing booze from this crowd, but again another off-speed pitch. Slide of the doesn't slide. Dirt falls behind three and one. This kid has walked just one batter tonight. Came last inning, Jose Vidro. Walked with two outs in the inning. Batting now, Broussard waits on deck with nobody out here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Number four, there's the second walk given up by Matsuzaka. And this is uh, where, you know, sometimes Dice K gets himself in trouble where he'll go into those streaks of walking or hitting a batter and, you know, maybe three in a row. and. Certainly trying to stay away from that as Veritek heads to the mound. And with the tying run coming to the plate. And Ben Brassard, who doubled his last time up. And John Farrell getting on the phone as the Red Sox get that bullpen busy. Hit a batter, walked a batter to begin things here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Delivery. SK has been able to wiggle out of a couple of jams as Manny Del Carmen gets up here in the sixth inning. 
Plus the bases loaded one out back in the third first and third double play back in the fourth. The only one two three inning that Dice K has enjoyed tonight was back in the first inning. And he retired the side in order on 12 pitches. So he chops it down the first baseline foul. And he's down 0 and 2. At second base, Beltre at first base. So it strikes out. They elevate it, and he strikes out that seven Ks for Dice K, one away. I mentioned the jams Dice K has got out of in this game back in the third inning with the bases loaded, the strikeout to Guillen on a high fastball, then of course the line out to Manny Ramirez in the fourth inning, the double play. A high fastball, a 5-4-3 double play. That was a first and third situation. And of course, once they get ahead of Ben Broussard, they want to go upstairs with a fastball, and that's exactly what he does, and he chases it to get the first out here in the sixth inning. So one away, Kenji Jojima, the batter. And he jumps on the first pitch, sending it foul. Grounded out to third base, reached on an infield hit. He's one for two tonight. Up top, the shortstop Lugo. Now back onto the dirt of the infield. To make the grab route number two. Fly rule two down. Georgia is retired, so a hit batter a walk, but this case come back strong to strike out Broussard and get Georgia to pop out. Well, here's Jose Lopez. Zone and he's fortunate this ball stayed in the ballpark. Just a flat breaking ball that stays in. Lopez pulls it and pulls it foul. Where is he getting much more aggressive with Dice lately? The last three batters swing at that first pitch. Lopez down 0 and 1. He's been hit by a pitch and grounded into a 5 4 3 double play. This time a much better slider, not a hanger this time, down and away from Lopez. And is it second Beltre at first, two down? Tipped into the catcher's mitt. That strikeout number eight for Dice K. 4 1 Boston to the end of six. I absolutely love Time Warner Cable's Pay Express. It's so easy to use and so convenient. After everyone is tucked in, I can quickly go online, check out my statement, pay my bill, and get on with my life. I don't have to worry about my bill getting lost in my monthly paper shuffle. I can even register for automatic withdrawal from my checking account. Paying bills is easy with Pay Express. I don't even have to think about it. And it's simple to sign up for, plus it's free. Pay Express really fits my lifestyle. It's the Chevy model year end event. And to kick it off, we've just announced the best offer ever on the all new Silverado. 0% APR for 60 months on half ton extended and crew cabs for well qualified buyers. 
Silverado has the best available highway fuel economy of any full-size pickup and a warranty that's better than Ford, better than Toyota. That's 0% for 60 months on our most popular Silverado models. Shop and compare at MainDriveChevy.com. It takes more than great furniture to make your home look good. It takes great design. Hi, I'm Allison from Dorsey Furniture, and for almost 20 years, I've been helping people create rooms they can be proud of. And now, my interior design services are available to you, right here at Dorsey Furniture. So, call today to schedule your free design consultation, and together, we'll create the room you'll love to be in. Personalized design with you in mind, only at Dorsey Furniture. Route 1A Holden, open seven days a week. And I haven't shaken hands yet. We've never chatted at a party. Our kids play different sports. But I can honestly say, without ever having met you, I'll help save your life. When you help the American Red Cross, you help America. Where Julio Lugo leads it off. Boston on top four to one as we head to the top half of the seventh inning. Lugo reaching out an infield hit in the third. He popped out to first base in the fifth inning. Stuart Washburn back on the mound. Swing and a miss. 0 and 2. Red Sox now with eight hits in the game. The two, three, and four hitters for Boston having quite a night. Euclid, Ortiz, and Ramirez. They've combined to go five for eight. Four runs scored, and they've gone four for nine with runners in scoring position. Lugo strikes out quick fashion. There's the fourth strikeout for Washburn and the first out of the seventh. Now, back in the fourth inning, Jason Veritek uh, driving in a couple of runs in a long at bat against Washburn. Missed with a fastball up, fastball inside. And he tries some off speed pitches, change up away, curveball away. Tries to go back inside. Veritek fouls it off. And then that ball down and in where Jason hits the double to drive in two runs. This pit sequence is brought to you by Commonwealth Health Connector. Cover your bases. Connect to health. Dustin Bedroya looking for his first hit of the night. 0 for 3. Fouled out. Grounded into a double play and fly to center. Bouncing all over the place. Evens it down now, two and two. Waiting on deck with one out here in the visiting half of the seventh inning. Washburn up over 100 pitches at 110 tonight. They started early last night with their bullpen situation. Of course, Horacio Ramirez did not help that out at all. So they started matchups very early last night, and they have the flexibility to do that with their bullpen. Four and down the first base with a one-out walk is Pedroia. It's almost time for the seventh inning stretch brought to you by Jordan Furniture. For the largest selection of best brand names and furniture and mattresses in New England, visit them in Reading, Natick, Avon, and Nashua. It's not just a store, it's an experience. Jim McLaren making his way out as Washburn has allowed a one-out walk to Dustin Pedroia. Going to make the change. This call to the bullpen is brought to you by New England Ford dealers. Have you driven a Ford lately? Ryan Roland Smith coming on for the Mariners with one out in the seventh inning in Boston on top four to one. 
What would you do with an extra $2,500? I'd buy more clothes. I'd get a bigger monitor. I'd go fishing. I'd get a new amp. If you know how to text, you could be next with the $2,500 Text to Win Challenge. It's so easy. All you do is text to win. Correctly answer two simple trivia questions in a row and you're entered. Enter up to 10 times per contest. We're giving away $2,500 each week for 13 weeks and your phone is your ticket to win. I'm going to need a bigger closet. Bigger is better. Happiness is a private charter. Ready to go? Let's go. I got an amp, some new wires, and some new hydraulics. Orale. Don't let someone else win your $2,500. Just text in to win. And that's not all. One of our lucky weekly winners will have a chance to win $100,000. Do it today so you'll have the money to play. You better text. You could be next. Just text CASH66 to 79608. Red Sox on top, four to one. JJ puts a course last night, securing the save against the Red Sox. This player profile is brought to you by Sovereign Bank, the official bank of the Red Sox cable network. Last three years, two and zero, the 1.65 ERA and four saves in seven opportunities. And we may very well see him at some point tonight. Red Sox hope not, especially on top right now, four to one. But Mariners are into their pen as they bring on Ryan Roland Smith. Second time we've seen him this year. He was recalled from Seattle, excuse me, from Tacoma when uh, Chris Reitzma went on the DL. That was on July the 30th. Overall, nine appearances for Roland Smith. 13 and two thirds, 16 uh, hits allowed, seven earned runs, four walks, and 16 strikeouts. Dustin Bedroy at first base with one out here in the seventh inning, and Kevin Euchel is coming up. Euclid with a couple of hits tonight. A single and a double wrapped around a line out to center field. Back over the outside corner to Euclid. First person that Roland Smith struck out in the big leagues, Ken Griffey Jr. in interleague play. He's 24 years old and part of this young bullpen for the Seattle Mariners. So he's an undrafted free agent. The Mariners and then the Minnesota Twins took him in the Rule 5 draft, but they returned him to Seattle. A strike to Euclid. Last year, starting the season on the DL with the left elbow strain, was reinstated uh, in early June. And pitched primarily at the double A level in San Antonio. But that almost hitting Euclid and the count. Now two and two. Euclid's one of those guys that kind of leans into at home plate, and anything up and in like this is going to come close, very close to him. Euclid has been hit by a pitch nine times this year. Red Sox have action in the pen as Adeki Okajima up. This kid Suzaka has gone the first six innings. And has thrown 99 pitches. Euclid strikes out. Oh, not happy with Mike Everett and he continues to talk it over, but he strikes out for the second out of the inning. Now Euclid thought that ball was down and in. As you Euclid's not uh, controlling his emotions, letting everybody know exactly how he feels. Telling Everett the ball was low. David Ortiz chops the first one foul into the Mariners' dugout. Oh, 
Reynolds struck out swinging in the first inning. He singled and scored in the fourth, singled and scored in the sixth. Oh, breaks in there for a strike, going two. Well, from the pole in the outfield is each row, a step or two towards right center. Deep and right is Guillen. Doesn't chase, and it's one and two. Jared Washburn going six and a third, giving up eight hits. So far, charged with the four runs. He walked two, struck out four. And was still responsible for Dustin Pedroia, who stands at first base. for Roland Smith. 4-1 Red Sox lead. It's seventh inning stretch time and time out for a Sports Desk Update with Catherine Tappet. Thank you, Don. Hi, everyone. Tonight on Sports Desk, presented by FW Webb, home of Frank Webb's Bat Center, six new members entered the Pro Football Hall of Fame this evening. We'll take you to Canton, Ohio for the ceremony. Plus, day one coverage of the Pan Mask Challenge. And Tiger Woods gets paired up again with Rory Sabatini for Sunday's final round at the Bridgestone. Those stories and more on Sports Desk immediately following the game. See you then. Back to Safeco Field after this. Text Tony 40 to 40100 and get a real gangster tone of the week. Me, I want what's coming to me. What's coming to you? The world, stupid. And everything in it. Text Tony 40 from your mobile phone and send it to 40100. The world, stupid. And everything in it. What does it take to earn AMCI's best-in-class certification for acceleration? Raw horsepower. The full-size Toyota Tundra. The truck that's changing it all. So you got the hottest cell phone, now you need the hottest ringtone. Get the latest ringtones to use on your personal cell phone right now. Text YV31 for you. Text TV31 for Laffy Taffy. Text WV31 for Walk It Out. Or text SV31 for Candy Shop. And send your choice to 77888. Choose from any of these great ringtones to use as your very own. And don't forget to text your choice to 77888. 4-1, to one, Red Sox on top as we head to the bottom of the seventh inning. It's time now for the fan of the game, brought to you by Pepsi. Oh, Red Sox fans here in Seattle. Hey, with Dice, Dice K's line tonight, he's throwing 99 pitches. That was Bill and Jody, the fans of the game. Risky bet for it. it off with a high drive to deep left. Ramirez at the wall, tries to climb it, but it's gone. Second straight night, Betcourt's gone deep. For his seventh home run of the year, and it's now 4 to 2, Boston. Seventh home run of the season and the first one that has not given the Mariners a lead in the ball game. That's incredible. First ball hitting off Dice K gets the fastball inside and Benton caught with the home run. And he trying to time it climb the wall but uh, not close. Nice large crowd alive again with the home run by Uneski Bettencourt. Had the three run shot last night. It was two for three from the number nine spot in the Mariners' lineup tonight as Ichiro slaps it foul off to the left. Yeah. 
to roll 0 for 3 in the game tonight. He's now 1 for 11 against Dice Kamatsuzaka. Euclid's complain about a low curveball. That was a low fastball called a strike. And you can see that Ichiro knows some English. Ball two, two, and two. This came on Suzaka allowing two home runs. Fortunately for the Red Sox and Daisuke, both solo shots. El Trey in the second, Bent Court here in the seventh. Ichiro chops at it to short. Lugo got to hurry up with Ichiro, and the throw is in time. What a kind of hiccup and in trouble with the speed of Ichiro, but Lugo gets it there in a hurry. You can see Lugo there trying to get himself in a position where he could catch the ball and be ready to throw it because of the speed of Ichiro going down the line. That backhanded play, but it was uh, he had kind of momentum going toward first base when he had the ball in the glove. So one down for Jose Vidro, who's been on base the last two times on an infield hit and a walk as he takes strike one. I think Everett uh, took his mask off and was barking back in the direction of the Mariners dugout. Not sure what he was hearing there is after the ground out to by Ichiro they started in on him a little bit and sort of really from both sides tonight. Well, I could pretty much tell you what it, uh, he was hearing from there but <laughs> there's a lot of children that might be watching the game so can't let that out. Dice K strikes him out. That's nine K's for Dice K. He had eight against him last time he faced him here in Seattle. His high on the season is 10, which he's done twice. That was in the first three games of the season. Batter with two down. And then striking out three times tonight against Dice K. And looking in the first, swinging in the third, swinging in the fifth. Still strong too. Dice K here in the seventh inning. Last fastball at 94 miles an hour. Sox have had Okajima warming for a long time. He was warming up in between innings and has been warming up during the entire inning. Struck out three times already. He now has two strikes on him. Dice K has struck out ten twice on the season. Did it in his first outing in a Red Sox uniform back on April 5th. And then had 10 K's on the 17th of April at Toronto at Rogers Center in a loss in a six inning effort against the Blue Jays. And the 2 2 pitch to Guillen. 
Strike three call. Tenth strike out of the night for Dice K. Matsuzaka. We played seven. Boston on top, four to two. Fun, Southwest Airlines has your fare. Fly to lots of fun places nationwide for as low as $59 one way. You are now free to move about the country. Rob Simpson's bringing the biscuit to Africa. Follow Bruins defenseman Andrew Ferentz and Panther Steve Monador as they travel through Tanzania on a special two-part summer series of Rubber Biscuit. Monday night at 8, followed by Sox Angels coverage. appeal. Do you have it? Find out Wednesday nights on Nesson. Red Sox lead at four to two as we go to the top of the eighth inning. Dice K with ten strikeouts on tonight. We'll show you three of them. He's done it with all of his pitches. His fastball. A slider that time to Guillen. And then a slider again to Betancourt. Ten punch outs tonight for uh, Dice K ties him for his season high. And Ramirez sails one down the left field line that'll get back and out of play. The ten strikeouts tonight for Matsuzaka. Your Boston area Lexus dealers make a donation of one hundred dollars for each strikeout to the Brain and Trauma Center at the Children's Hospital Boston. So far this season they have donated ten thousand eight hundred dollars. And Roland Smith back on the mound here for the eighth inning. He struck out Euclid and Ortiz in impressive fashion to win the seventh. Now Manny hits a hot shot but right at Bentoncourt at shortstop. And Ramirez out number one of the eighth. Tomorrow afternoon at three, Olympia Sports presents the Boston Globe pregame show with Eric Fried and Ken Ryan. They'll preview the pitching matchup for the series finale, Josh Beckett against Miguel Batista. Plus, the Boston Globe's Gordon Eads and Dan Shaughnessy bringing the latest news from the Sox and around Major League Baseball. And we'll reveal the Bertucci's Player of the Week. It all begins tomorrow afternoon at 3, and it's only on Nesson. One down for the Red Sox third baseman, Mike Lowell. He's put the ball in the air three times. There's nothing to show for it, though. He's popped out twice and fouled out. It looks like the Red Sox are go with the gun, gonna go with the Gagne Papelbon combination as Okajima is sat down and Gagne now getting loose. Inside two and one to Lowell. And Washburn on the hook for the Mariners tonight. As Lowell lines one down the left field line, a fair ball. And a roll all the way down to the corner as Raul Abania is over to play it. Lowell into second base with a one out double. Well, certainly Mike Lowell happy to see Washburn out of the game. Uh, he is now in his career 0 for 12 against Washburn. Now he gets Roland Smith and picks up the double right down that left field line. Down low in scoring position. Red Sox looking to obtain some insurance. As Jason Baratek bats. Line to right, double to left to drive in two runs. And then fly to the warning track in straightaway center field. Each a row. Coming back by the 405 marker to make the grab. It's 0 
two. Aaron Washburn and Roland Smith, six strikeouts tonight for Mariners pitching. Strikes out. He thought it was outside as he barks at Mike Everett on the way back to the dugout. Now barking from both sides, uh, <laughs> Red Sox and Mariners tonight. Roland Smith's got a pretty good breaking ball. Ernsek, that well, that pitch was low and away. Drew one for three tonight singled his last time up grounding out and striking out Struck in there even the count of one and one we talked about uh, the losing streak here in Seattle for the Red Sox which was extended to nine games but the Red Sox are just two and five overall against the Mariners this season. For the three game sweep here last time at Safeco Field. Red Sox took two out of three from them at Fenway Park. Thanks for Josh Beckett and Brendan Donnelly in that series. Dice K lost that series at Fenway Park. It's not been an easy go of it overall against the Mariners, whether it be at Fenway or here in Seattle. Red Sox have lost 10 of their last 12 against the Mariners. Strikeout for Roland Smith. We head to the bottom of the eighth. It's four to two, Boston. AMCI's best in class certification for combined acceleration and braking isn't just handed out. You've got to earn it. Full-size Toyota Tundra, the truck that's changing it all. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. People who wear ASICs are loyal. Maybe too loyal. Get it at Olympia Sports. Shop with confidence. Satisfaction guaranteed. Start your weekend early with Friday Night Fedway, presented by Team Sully Beck. The sooner we get you into the ballpark, the sooner we get you into the game. Every home game Friday, Ness delivers game day experience. That is Friday night at Fedway Park. So start your weekend early at 5.30. It's the new prime time. Friday Night Fenway, presented by Team Sally Beck. For every Red Sox game that goes extra innings, so the Sox get a save, CBS Pharmacy will donate $500 to Children's Hospital. CBS Pharmacy is the official pharmacy of the Boston Red Sox. Four to two, Red Sox on top as we head to the last half of the eighth inning, and the new pitcher on for the Red Sox is Eric Gagne. Gagne's 36th appearance of the season, his second for the Red Sox. In his Red Sox debut, that was against Baltimore on August 2nd. Went an inning in that game, couple of hits, one earned run, and had two strikeouts. Labanez leading it off for the Mariners. 0 for 2 is hit by a pitch. Labanez, Beltre, and Brossard scheduled to bat in the inning. Well, Dice came out Suzaka with a 10 strikeout performance tonight, throwing 113 pitches over seven innings. The two runs he gave up a solo shot for Adrian Beltre in the second, a solo shot for Yuneski Bentoncourt in the seventh. Leaves with a chance to get his 13th win of the year. As the breaking ball is fouled off by Raul Labanez. Thing about Dice K tonight too is he pitched out of a couple of pretty tough jams in this ball game. That's some big outs when he had to get them. 
Well, the base is loaded to left by the Mariners in the third inning. First and third with one out in the fourth. And we got Jose Lopez to ground into a double play. Third time the Daisuke has had 10 strikeouts in a game. Falling behind two and one. Well, his Red Sox debut, he struck out two. In the ninth inning on Thursday against Baltimore was touched for a run on two hits. So this is down and in, and it's now three and one. Opponents to a 200 batting average. And this year in Texas, allowing a run in just six of 35 games. Listen, full count now. Fastball at 93 miles an hour from Gagne on the 3 1 count. Going right after the Banez. The 3 2. Straight three call. Comes back to get a Banyas. It's an 11th strikeout for Red Sox pitching. After falling behind, 3 and 1 back to back fastballs from Gagne. One swinging and one looking. To face a former teammate and Adrian Beltre, both on the Dodgers. As Beltre tonight, homered off Dice came out Suzaka in the second. He fly to left and walk tonight. This ball one from Gagne. One for two with a double against Gagne. Right-handed batters hitting at 231 against Eric Gagne. Home runs he is a lot, which is two, both hit by right-handed batters. Lefty's hitting at just 167. As Bartre skies one to the left, playable for Manny Ramirez. And there's two down in the eighth. So quite a scene on Thursday as Eric Gagne made his debut with the Red Sox coming in at Fenway Park for the first time after the trade at the trade deadline. And of course, Sagagne well received, as you might imagine. Got that to first outing right out of the way as he finished that game. It was not a save situation. And his new role with the Red Sox. Talks it over here with Jason Veritek with two outs getting ready to deal with Ben Broussard. Uh, you know, Don, you mentioned the two home runs he's given up in both the right hand is one of them to Dustin Pedroia. That's Remember right. that long at bat yeah. down in Texas? 12 pitch at bat. Yep. And now their teammates. And with two down in the eighth inning, Ben Broussard's the batter. He's one for three in the game tonight. So far, it's been fastball, curveball from Gagne. Not a changeup yet. The ball starting to warm in the pen. Oh, left field line and a foul ball. Well, Kojima was up a long time tonight, uh, warming up in the pen. The Red Sox do not go with him. Of course, you have the day game tomorrow. And you can bring him right back out there tomorrow as part of a combination. Is this a threesome now working out of the pen with Gagne and Papabon and Okajima? You do have that availability for him tomorrow now. Yeah, that's the luxury of Gagne. And, you know, now today was a perfect example of the typical Okajima Papabon close to this game. And 
side three for seven against Eric Gagne at 429. Sox pitching has retired five Mariners in a row. And they know the last nine. Deck two down in the eighth. This will be the changeup. Middle and into center field. A two out base hit for Ben Brassard. Owners will bring the tying run to the plate. Brassad, a good low ball hitter. They go with the changeup with two strikes and up the middle for the base hit. His first changeup that he's thrown in this game tonight. Generally, the, the way they go after Brassad once they get ahead of him is with high fastballs. So, two down, Brassard at first base, and Kenji Jojum of the batter. His career against Gagne. Georgia with an infield hit in the fourth is one for three in the game tonight. Bates and misses with ball one. Jojima. And the Moro up in the pen for the Mariners. Strike in. It's one and two now to Jojima. Gains his lead, held on by Euclid at first base. Pulls it back to the screen. We'll do it again with a count of one and two. Well, it was closing games. He converted 177 of 184 career save opportunities. 6.2 percent success rate that ranks as the best in Major League history among pitchers with at least 100 save 180 save tries. It was the side of the one two and it's outside two and two he'll take second. Second stolen base of the season for Ben Broussard. Not even the throw by Jason Veritek. Two down, Broussard in scoring position now at second base. Mariners trailing by two. To the left, around deep, Manny back, and it's off the wall. Broussard will score. It's an RBI single for Jojima, and it's a one run game. Now, two outs, two quick outs for uh, Gagne, then the base hit on a change up to Prasad. This is the fastball of Jojima, and he rifles it off that wall of left field. Fortunately for the Red Sox, he did not elevate it enough. Manny gets it back quickly and holds 
Jojima to the single. Looks like a pinch runner coming in now. Bloomquist pinch running. Kenji Jojima he represents the tying run. This is driven to left by Lopez, and that's going to be in for a hit. Bloomquist to third base as Manning throws to second base. And it is a double for Jose Lopez. Now runners at second and third with two outs. The tying run is 90 feet away, the go ahead run in scoring position. And red hot Yudevsky Betancourt coming to the plate. Well, this has happened very quickly. After Gagne got two quick outs. Yuneski Bentoncourt who has two hits tonight a single and a home run. He struck out in the fifth and is 0 for 1 in his career against Gagne with a strikeout. This sellout crowd very much alive right now. One to Bentoncourt. Oh, still up. If the Mariners can grab a lead, JJ Putz getting himself ready. Presents a tying run at third base. The go-ahead run at second, and Jose Lopez one run back to the mound. And Gagne will throw to first for the out. It ends the inning. The Mariners get one run back, and they trail by a run. We head to the ninth, four-three, Boston. Summer Sundays. Join Andy Brickley for a new Bruins classic each week, straight from the Nesson archives. Chill with Rob Simpson in special summer editions of Rubber Biscuit. And kick back with Hazel May for all new episodes of The Buzz. Let Nesson put your summer nights on ice with Bruins Summer Sundays. When you're on the go, you need the convenience, quality, and pricing you'll always find at Extra Mart. Extra Mart is proud to be your headquarters for the 147th Annual Woodstock Fair in Woodstock, Connecticut, this Labor Day weekend, August 31st through September 3rd. The Woodstock Fair features over 48 acres of rides and exhibits, great food and top-notch entertainment, including Trick Pony, The Bangles, The Cherry Pop and Daddies, Quiet Riot, Jordan Knight, and Josh Grayson. Save $10 by getting your advanced admission and ride tickets at participating Extra Mart stores. Tickets are going fast, so get yours today. Seriously, four feet by five feet. Well, apparently not, because I'm looking right at it. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Are you serious? Just give it a try. Role play. What's your name? He doesn't say anything, because he's a doll. GEICO.com. So easy, a caveman can do it. Back at Safe Good Field in Seattle with a game summary is brought to you by your local Lincoln Mercury dealers. Jason Baratek with two outs in the fourth inning, able to drive in a pair of runs. We'll check back on the game summary 
in a little bit as we check out the new battery now for the Seattle Mariners. As Jamie Burke now in to do the catching. The new pitcher is Brendan Morrow. Morrow is a hard thrower. 48 strikeouts in 44 innings, but he also has walked 39. Opponents only hitting 211. Those walk totals, though, have been down recently. Another good, strong arm out of that bullpen for the Seattle Mariners. Well, very nice job from Ryan Roland Smith. Yes, yeah, very good job. He struck out four batters. He faced uh, six batters, striking out four of them. He did give up a double to Mike Lowell, but then struck out Veritek and Drew to end the inning. Red Sox looking to obtain some insurance. It's just a one run advantage now as Coco Crisp leads it off. And it takes ball one inside. Coco is grounded out to third, fly to center, and grounded into a fielder's choice. Strike one and one out of Crisp. Washburn <laughs> going six and a third. He's on the hook. Mariner started giving up four runs and Ryan Roland Smith an inning in two thirds. And Brendan Morrow on for the top of the ninth. His pile two and two. Swing and a miss. 96 on the fastball from Brendan Morrow in the first out of the ninth. Now Jason Veritek on a double with two outs back in the fourth inning to put the Red Sox on top in the game. Two to that, two to one at that time. And the sixth inning, Manny Ramirez with a double. Nice came out Suzaka with a total of 10 strikeouts. Chance to win his 13th game of the season. Double by Manny picked up his 70th RBI of the season. With a two run sixth inning. Red Sox getting two in the fourth, two in the sixth inning. This one is by Beltre at third base down the line and left Lugo. And they head for two as Ibanez's throw is cut off and Lugo's got himself a one out double. And sometimes when a guy like Morrow throws a breaking ball, it's doing the hitter a favor. He throws as high as 97 miles an hour, but he throws the slider hit of Lugo, and it's right by Adrian Beltre. Beltre was in on the grass, and it quickly gets by him, and once it does, it's two bases for Julio Lugo. So the Red Sox get him in in scoring position. Back up on top of the lineup for Dustin Pedroia, who's 0 for 3 in the game tonight with a walk. Uh, Chavez, the pitching coach, heads out. Oh, more able to strike out Coco Crisp to begin the inning. And Julio Lugo, the double. Still running himself in the Red Sox bullpen as the Mariners will have the top of their order scheduled in the bottom of the ninth inning. It'll be Ichiro, Jose Vidro, Jose Guillen. Anybody gets on Raul Abanez will have a chance. And Applebaum get himself ready. Red Sox trying to tack on at least another run as Pedroia. Stands in here against Brendan Morrow. One out, a runner at second. And one, two, Pedroia. The Sox have 10 hits. Pedroia does not have a hit, although he did reach on a walk last time up. And the other member of the Red Sox not to have a hit in the starting nine, Coco Crisp. So, four in the game tonight. 
Shallow right. Out goes Lopez. In comes Guillen. And Guillen makes the catch two down. Two away, and it'll bring up Kevin Euclid. And Cheryl up now in the pen. And that's for the guy that's on deck, David Ortiz, if he has to face him. If the inning continues. Plus two hits tonight, a single in the first, a double in the sixth inning. That's ball one. Multi hit nights tonight for Euclid Ortiz. And Julio Lugo has two hits. Waits on deck. Swung and a miss. Nucleus down one and two. Nucleus turning around the Aussie home plate up by Everett if the ball was high. Everett agreed. Strikes out. So Morrow gives up the double, but he quickly retires the next two. We head to the bottom of the ninth, 4 3 Boston. It's Ford's model year clearance, and it's the best time to buy. With 0% financing on every Ford car, including Ford Fusion with outstanding performance, handling, and styling. Focus with up to 37 miles per gallon. And Mustang, the highest ranked mid-sized sporty car in initial quality by J.D. Power & Associates. 0% financing or up to $3,000 cash back during Ford's model year clearance. Visit your local Ford dealer today. How would you like to run a business of your own from the comfort of your own home? It's not as crazy as it sounds. I made over $100,000 a year from my home. I just made a down payment for our vacation home working part-time. Yeah, you have to be crazy to visit this website and find out how to start your home business. Crazy like a fox. Log on and get your success kit. I made $5,000 yesterday. Crazy? I don't think so. Log on now. Behold the wonder of it. It's wide mouth allowing it to flow cold and unrestrained all that is parched. It is awe-inspiring, is it not? We really love this river. River? No. I'm talking about this Coors Light Wide Mouth Can. The Wide Mouth Can, a wide opening for wide open refreshment, only from Frost Brew Coors Light. People will travel great distances to enjoy this. You can get these Wide Mouth Cans anywhere. We're talking about the river. Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Boston Red Sox baseball in Nesson is brought to you by New England Ford dealers. Sovereign Bank, the official bank of the Red Sox cable network. McCarty, the New England Dodge dealers, and by Southwest Airlines. Well, here we go on to the bottom of the ninth inning, four to three. The Red Sox on top and on for Boston, Jonathan Papelbon. Papelbon with 24 saves and 26 opportunities. Uh, save 24 coming on August the 1st against the Orioles. Had a couple of strikeouts in the one inning against Baltimore. Overall for Papelbon, his 39th game of the season. Well, another difficult game here in Seattle for the Red Sox. The one run lead going into the bottom of the ninth, and of course, Ichiro leading off. Pedro and Guillen expected in the inning. Getting a little bit closer as they picked up a run off Eric Gagne in the eighth inning. As Gagne going in and giving up three hits, the one run he didn't walk anybody. He struck out a batter. He 
Dancing's all out of breath. She was dancing, trying to get on that big screen in the outfield, but they didn't put her on. Now she's out of breath. Well, here he comes. Tough time against Dennis Gay tonight. He was 0 for 4 against Matsuzaka. Got it up four times. Fielder's choice in the third inning. Found himself a big favor if you can keep him off the base pass here in the night. He turn a single into a double or a heartbeat. His career against Papelbon. Mitchell take strike one. Gagne with one strikeout in his inning of work, so Red Sox pitching tonight 11 strikeouts. As Daisuke had 10 in seven innings. Foul is down 0 and 2. The differences between Papelbon and Gagne. Gagne more over the top. Papelbon better velocity. Gagne with a changeup. Papelbon with a splitter. Gagne with a curveball. Papelbon with a slider. Papelbon 24 out of 26 in save chances this season. Back to 60 in the American League in saves. Just looks like he's trying to foul the ball off, gets a fastball inside, and just trying to somehow foul it off. And he does. And the 0-2 pitch. Ichiro strikes out. Papabon gets him for the first out of the night. I'll tell you what, the Red Sox have had good success against each row, and that's the reason why. They basically have kept the ball away from him. After coming inside and each row fouling it off, he just kind of waves at this outside fastball. The 12th strikeout for Red Sox pitching tonight, one down in the ninth. Here's Jose Vidro. Wild swing and a miss. That's the splitter from Papelbon. First time Jose Vidro has ever faced Jonathan Papelbon. And as he's all geared up for a 95 mile an hour fastball, and he gets the split finger instead on the first pitch. Papelbon quickly ahead, nothing in two. Right on deck, Jose Guillen. Left handed batters against Papelbon are hitting at just 122. There's a group nine for 74 against Papelbon. Stays alive. The bottom all star for the second straight year. And just the fourth Red Sox player to ever be selected each of his first two big league seasons. Let's go looking on to see if this bullpen, and namely Papelbon, can finish it off for him. He's in line for his 13th win of the year. A 2 pitch. And a tune out of Vidro. 
Two strikes, one out, base is empty. Looks like another splutter. Pedro swings and misses and strikes out. 13 K for Red Sox pitcher tonight. Pavelbon has struck out the first two that he faces in the ninth. Well, he threw a couple of splitters in that at bat to Pedro. Pedro has struck out three times tonight. And again, he's one of the toughest guys in the league to strike out. Here's the splitter from Pavelbon. Got the first strike on Bedro with that pitch and the final strike. Speaking of strikeouts, here is Jose Guillen, who tonight has struck out four times. He has never struck out five times in his career. 0 for 4, 4 Ks. Guillen swinging with the first pitch and missing. And he knew that was coming because anytime a guy has struck out four times, he, he doesn't want to do it five. He's going after the first pitch. Waiting around. The moose. That's a ball and strike. Three of the four strikeouts to, to Guillen have been on fastballs from a Dice kid. The other was on a slider. Ibanez waiting on deck. Going to let to finish it off right here with two down in the ninth. Side two and one. innings from Matsuzaka giving up two runs. An inning from Eric Gagne giving up a run. Papelbon trying to finish it off here in the ninth as the first two outs both by way of the K. Like he held up. Apparently, the ball outside. I don't remember the Seattle Mariners has ever struck out five times in a game. And the three and one right now, two outs in the night. Guillen. Two outs last of the night. Red Sox trying to end a nine game losing streak at Safeco Field. Guillen fouls it off. <laughs> nice try. Thanks. <laughs> Again, the three two. All four and down to first goes the end. Applebaum walks him with two outs. And the pitch on her first base. Adam Jones at pinch running for the end. So 
Jones runs as Raul Banyos bats. The tying run on now for the Mariners. Banyos, old for three, has been hit by a pitch. He was struck out twice. That he has. There goes Jones at first base. The pitch is a ball to throw down, and that one will skip off of Lugo, but backed up by Pedroia. The stolen base for Jones puts him in scoring position now with two down. Well, he picked a good pitch, too. He got the split thing at fastball from Babylon. That's what they want Jones to do and uh, inject some energy in this lineup and he does here by getting the steal. There's a splitter from Pavel Bond, the off-speed pitch. Actually in a pretty good spot for Guratek to throw. It's almost like a pitch out. But Jones steals it. So now, a potential tying run in scoring position. Strike to Raul Labanez. <laughs> gathered by Veritek, and it's two and one. Lebanez <laughs> striking out each row to begin the inning. Strikes out Vidro to get the first two outs. Walks Jose Guillen on a 3 2 pitch. Again, took. After striking out four times tonight, he takes on the 3 2. Now Jones runs for it, steals second. That's right, waiting on deck. A 2 1 pitch. Outside 3 and 1. Again, he threw the first fastball right by Abanez, then it's been split fingered fastballs ever since. Strikeouts followed by back-to-back -back walks. The time run is on. The winning run stands at first now. Well, Trey's old for two in his career against Jonathan Papelbon. In the last two innings against Gagne and Papelbon, this is the 11th batter to go to the plate. Well, Trey swinging at the first pitch, pops it up. Foul ground, Veritek makes the catch, and the Red Sox win. The threat here by the Mariners in the night, but it is Papelbon and the Red Sox who get out of the jam and snap a nine-game losing streak in Seattle. As the Mariners make it interesting in the bottom of the ninth inning, but the Red Sox hold on to win four to three. And the 13th victory of the season for Dice came out Suzaki as Papelbon finishes it off. And the Red Sox win game two of this series against the Mariners. Back in Seattle after this. Captioning for Red Sox Baseball and Nesson is brought to you by Aplac. Ask about it at work. So you got the hottest cell phone, now you need the hottest ringtone. Get the latest ringtones to use on your personal cell phone right now. 
Text MV31 for Super Mario Brothers. Text BA31 for Sweet Home Alabama. Text WH31 for This Is Why I'm Hot. Or text YK31 for what you know about that. And send your choice to 77888. Choose from any of these great ringtones to use as your very own. And don't forget to text your choice to 77888. Baseball is really a neighborhood game. The feel at the local school, a sandlot, or even the backyard. And at Sovereign, the same is true for banking. Our roots are in the neighborhood and always will be. Which means even though Sovereign offers big banking resources, we never forget the value of small town attention. NASCAR stock car to reach 200 miles per hour. The first minivan. The first pickup with side curtain airbags. And now, Dodge introduces the industry's first lifetime powertrain warranty. It's the best warranty in the business. So come check out the best lineup of Dodge vehicles ever. And grab life for a lifetime. Well, the Red Sox win an exciting ball game in Seattle, 4-3. The play of the game is brought to you by Foxwoods Resort Casino. Ten strikeouts on the night for Daisuke. He worked himself out of a couple of really tough jams early in this ball game. Well pitched game by Daisuke. The ten strikeouts ties a season high for him. He's done it three times. So the Red Sox win it 4-3 for Jerry Remy and Tina Servasio. I'm Don Orsillo saying good night from Safeco Field. Join us again tomorrow afternoon for the series finale. Our coverage begins at 3. Visit Nesson.com or New England Sports Live Online. This has been a presentation of Nesson, New England's most watched sports network. Coming up next, Sports Desk, live from the Nesson HD Television Center. Join Catherine Tappan right after the break. If this is fair, it could be. It is number 500 for Alex Rodriguez. It was an historic day in the AL and the NL. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Sports Desk, presented by FW Webb, home of Frank Webb's Bat Centers. I'm Catherine Tappan. A-Rod powers the Yanks to a clobbering of the Royals and enters the record books. That story in just a moment. But first, to Petco Park, more than 33 years after Hank Aaron belted his final home run, Barry Bonds has pulled even with the hammer. Bonds clubbed his 755th career home run, tying Aaron's major league record. He took the Padres' Clay Hensley deep to left field in the second inning on Saturday night in front of an emotionless commissioner, Bud Selig. Bonds is now one away from standing alone in front first place on the all-time list. He was greeted at the plate by his son and mobbed by teammates on his way out to the dugout. Bonds is averaging about one home run a week, so stay tuned for number 756. And now to the American League, to a place where the Red Sox wish they didn't have to travel to, Safeco Field in Seattle. We'll pick up Alex Rodriguez's home run. Instead, wasting no time, bottom of the first facing Kyle Davies for the first time in his career. First pitch he sees, A-Rod pulls it to left and out for number 500. He becomes the youngest player in MLB history to reach that milestone. A-Rod is the third player in Yankee pinstripes to hit number 500, joining Mickey Mantle and Babe Ruth, and he is the third person to hit number 500 at Yankee Stadium. The home run, his 36th of the year and league-leading 108th RBI, gives the Yankees a 3-0 lead. Then we pick it up in the bottom of the sixth. The Yankees up 7-6, no outs. Bobby Abreu crushes the Joel Peralta pitch to straightaway center for his 11th of the year as the Yankees go on to win it 16-8.
Now to the American League to a place where the Red Sox wish they didn't have to travel to Safeco Field in Seattle. After Friday night's loss, the Sox have lost nine straight in Seattle. That is the longest road losing streak in Seattle for the local nine. So on a positive note, the Sox sent Daisuke Matsuzaka to try and break the streak. Meanwhile, Matsuzaka was looking for his 13th win of the season, making his fourth start of the season against the Mariners and has yet to record a win. To the bottom of the first, Jose Vidro can't check his swing on the high fastball as he strikes out. Next batter, Jose Guillen goes down looking. Bottom of the second, Daisuke starts off the inning striking out Raul Ibanez. Next batter, Daisuke can't get the fastball by Adrian Beltre. He hits the homer to center field, his 17th of the year. Seattle goes on top, one zip. Bottom of the third now, bases loaded, one out. Daisuke strikes out Jose Guillen for the second time in the game. Next batter, Daisuke gets himself out of the jam by getting Raul Ibanez to fly out to left, and that will end the inning. Top of the fourth, Sox have men on first and second. Jason Veritek hits this one to left field. David Ortiz comes around to tag home. Manny Ramirez tries and scores and will slide in safely to give the Sox a 2-1 lead on the Veritek double. Solid effort from the local nine, hustling their way around the bases. Bottom of the fourth, two on, one out. Daisuke gets Jose Lopez to ground into a 5-4-3 double play, and that is going to end the inning. To the bottom of the fifth now, Daisuke striking out Unitsky. Betancourt looking later in the fifth. He strikes out Jose Guillen for the third time in the game. Sixth inning we go with a man on second, no outs. David Ortiz singles to right field. Jose Guillen tries to get Kevin Euclid at third, but his throw ends up in the stands. Euclid awarded home. Ortiz goes to third, socks up 3-1. Next batter is Manny Ramirez, and he takes this one, doubles to left. Ortiz scores on Ramirez's 70th RBI of the year. Sox take a solid lead 4-1, to one, but no lead is preserved in Seattle for the Sox. Bottom of the seventh, Betancourt leading things off. He hammers a dice game pitch to left, his second homer of the series. Seattle down now just 4-2. Later in the inning, Daisuke striking out Guillen again, giving Guillen the golden sombrero. It's Daisuke's 10th K of the game. He goes seven innings, allows six hits, two earned runs, and we jump to the eighth. Eric Gagne making his second appearance for the Sox and for the first time in the setup role. With a man on second, two outs. Kenji Dojima hits a shot off the wall and left. Ben Broussard scores. Seattle now down 4-3, and they're getting closer. Later in the inning with men on second and third, Betancourt grounds it back to Gagne, throws to first. That's going to end the inning. Gagne frustrated as he walks off the mound. Top of the ninth with Jonathan Papelbon coming in to close it out. Hoping to preserve this lead after striking out Ichiro swinging. Jose Vidro sets up to the plate. He also goes down by way of the K. Adrian Beltre now with two on and two outs. He pops up for the out. Veritex snags it as the Sox go on to win this one 4-3. So the Red Sox finally break the Safeco curse, improving to 64 and one when leading after eight innings. Sox pitchers tied their season high with 13 Ks on the night, led by a seven inning, 10 strikeout performance from Daisuke. The local nine have now won 11 of their last 15 games and improved to 14 and nine since the All-Star break. The Red Sox nine game losing streak at Safeco Field comes to an end. Jason Veritek joins us. And Jason, how nice to get that victory. It got very close there at the end and finally win in this ballpark. Yeah, I don't know what, what, what's been different. We just can't get things in the right direction. We pitch well. We don't hit. We didn't hit well. Uh, finally, you know, we got one, but I don't think it's a ballpark as much as just circumstance. Two runs double for you in the fourth inning. Both you and Mike Lowell had great at bats. How were you battling Washburn? You know, he's he's changed a lot. You know, we don't see him as quite as much as we used to. And, uh, you know, he's changing a tilt on the ball and, and uh, throwing curveball sliders, change ups and um, using all of his pitches more than than what we've seen him in the past. Daisuke Matsuzaka beats the Mariners for the first time in four starts, a 10 strikeout night. Why was he so effective? Uh, his, his location of his fastball was pretty good. He had good life on his fastball today. And then we're able to, you know, hide his breaking stuff. And when we can do that, he can go deep in the games. And finally, a couple of jams, but what do you think of the Gagne Papelbon combination getting it done? It was good. Um, you know, Gagne gets first two outs and gets a C9 ground ball. And then, uh, then we had a little mayhem, but, um, you know, he threw the ball well, and he's, he's a huge addition. And then, uh, Pap, it's nice to see him get out there. Uh, we haven't got to see him in a little while. All right, Jason, thank you for your time. Thank you. All right, Red Sox beat the Seattle Mariners. Now let's send it back to Sports Desk.
Tina, thank you. And we are just getting underway here on the show. Tiger Woods finds himself in a familiar position heading into Sunday's final round at the Bridgestone Invitational. We'll tell you why. Michael Irvin is one of the most elite receivers in NFL history. And now the league is ready to honor the former Cowboys star to Kenton, Ohio for the Pro Football Hall of Fame induction ceremony. And day one of a very monumental event right here in Massachusetts. The Pan Mass Challenge is underway. We'll show you Saturday's action when Sports Desk rides on. Sports Desk is presented by FW Webb, home of Frank Webb's Bath Centers. Visit us online at www.frankwebb.com. You've seen the highlights. You know the stats. Now go deeper into the sports you love with Sports Illustrated. And we're so confident you'll love SI, we'll let you try it free. That's right, free. Simply call or visit us online now, and we'll send you three months of SI free. Get 14 issues of bone-crushing photography, in-depth analysis, and behind-the-scenes coverage of your favorite sports free. If you love it, do nothing. You'll receive an additional six months of SI at the guaranteed low rate of only 89 cents an issue, a savings of over 74% off the cover price. If not, simply call and cancel. No questions asked. With more behind-the-scenes coverage and new sections, SI is better than ever. And now you can get three months of SI free. Don't delay. Call or visit SITVoffer.com now and get three months of Sports Illustrated free. Call 1-800-368-1500 or go to SITVoffer.com now. America runs on Dunkin's new iced tea. Thirst quenching deliciousness like only Dunkin' can bring you. Dunkin' Donuts. America runs on Dunkin'. Refresh your summer with Dunkin' Donuts new iced tea and the Red Sox by entering the Dunkin' Donuts Refresh Your Summer Sweepstakes. You can win a VIP Fenway Park experience. Visit Nesson.com and enter today. Wednesday on Socks Appeal. Amar's traditional parents are hoping to arrange a nice Indian girl for him to settle down with. No way! <laughs> That's so hard to believe. <laughs> what does that mean? I'm the king of the world! So who's the loser? My parents are here. Will they find an acceptable match when they follow him to Fenway? Wednesday before the game, we're making romance a reality. One game at a time. Just when you thought the season couldn't get any hotter, Nesson's turning up the heat. The Sox face the AL West leading Angels in a six-game, two-part series before closing out the month in the Bronx. We'll champion a winning cause, a world without cancer, for the WEEI Nesson Jimmy Fund Radiothon. Rob Simpson journeys to Africa for two special summer editions of Rubber Biscuit. And get on the road to Fenway for a minor league doubleheader. It's blazing new, blazing hot, all August on Nesson. Time. That's big in sports. You got your penalty clocks, your shot clocks, your play clocks, you got your timeouts, your halftime, your overtime, your running time, and of course, you got prime time, which apparently now is 5.30 on this and all week long, all at 5.30. I gotta get my Monster Monday, I gotta get my Globe 10.0, my Friday night Fenway. So start your play clock early at 5.30, that's Nesson's new prime time. Ugh. Sports Desk is brought to you in part by Prism Consulting, located in Quincy, Massachusetts, helping businesses lower operating costs through energy conservation. Day one of the Pan Mass Challenge kicked off on Saturday. The nation's original fundraising bike-a-thon raises more money than any other athletic fundraising event in the country. With 99 cents of each dollar raised directly going to the Jimmy Fund, the PMC has contributed more than $171 million to cancer research and treatment at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute since its inception in 1980. This weekend, over 5,000 cyclists will travel nine different routes, logging between 70 and 192 miles over one one or two days. They travel through 46 scenic Massachusetts towns. Along the way, we caught up with Nesson's own Rob Simpson, pedaling fast for the Bruins Pan Mass bike team, joined by former Bruins great Terry O'Reilly, along with the rest of the Bruins crew riding for the cause. You know, we got to kick this thing. You know, there's just there's just too much of it out there, and everybody's touched by it. And, uh, I defy you to find a person that hasn't uh, he hasn't lost somebody you cared about. To, you know, to this this terrible disease. So, it's pretty incredible that 90% of the uh, you know the money raised you know goes exactly to Jimmy Fund and Dana Farber, and, and really that's uh, 
that says it all. We're not done yet. Still to come, back to Seattle for a recap of game two of this series from Don and Jerry. Josh Beckett lost back-to-back -back starts for the first time this season last week. He gets the ball on Sunday, hoping to fix things in Seattle. And Thurman Thomas may have caused headaches for the Patriots during his time, but his legendary career is being honored in Canton, Ohio. Stick around. We're coming right back. This segment of Sports Desk is brought to you in part by Bacardi. Want to get your hands on a brand new fuel efficient Chevy car or truck? Visit Nesson.com in August and enter the Chevy Triple Play Contest. One lucky fan could win one of three Chevy vehicles for each game this month. If Boston turns a triple play, you get to drive away. So enter today. What would you do with a Nesson All Access Pass? Visit Nesson.com and find out. Win the Friendly's Fantasy Sweepstakes and we'll take a ride in a limo to tour Nesson's HD Studios and meet a sports desk anchor. Watch the team take batting practice from the field. Visit the Nesson HD broadcast booth and watch the pregame show live from Yaki Way. Enter at Nesson.com and your friendly's fantasy could come true. Throughout Greater Boston, you can find the work of Pipefitters Local 537 and the New England Mechanical Contractors. From hospitals to hotels to the Natick Mall Project, our members and signatory contractors install and service a wide variety of process pipe systems and associated equipment, such as the HVAC and refrigeration systems in the TD Bank North Center. We are committed to safety and servicing the public and private sectors. For more information about us and for a list of our contractors, visit pipefitters537.org. Catch your socks round the clock with Socks in Two, presented by T&K Asphalt Services. Tune in game nights at midnight and the next afternoon for two-hour game replays. Ness and keep your socks on with Socks in Two. You want to talk sports? I'm your point. Globe 10.0, presented by Verizon. Hosted by Bob Ryan. He's going one-on-one -on -one with Boston's best sports writers. On the next Globe 10.0 presented by Verizon, Jackie McMullen will be here as we go head to head on the 10 hottest questions of the day. Tune in for 10 sports questions and a man with all the answers. Don't miss the point. Tuesday night at 5.30, only on Nesson. That's the point. Time. That's big in sports. You got your penalty clocks, your shot clocks, your play clocks, you got your timeouts, your halftime, your overtime, your running time, and of course, you got prime time, which apparently now is 5.30 on this and all week long, all at 5.30. I gotta get my Monster Monday, I gotta get my Globe 10.0, my Friday night Fenway. So start your play clock early at 5.30, that's Nesson's new prime time. Ugh. It took just a little over three hours to get it done, but the Sox finally beat the Mariners at Safeco for the first time in 10 tries. Big Poppy was two for four, and Daisuke Matsuzaka picked up his 13th win of the season. Let's hear from the two men who called the game, Don Orsillo and Jerry Remy. Well, after nine straight losses at Safeco Field in Seattle, the Red Sox finally break the jinx of sorts, but it took a little bit tonight. Yeah, this was a real good ball game, exciting game for the Red Sox in particular, and Daisuke was immense tonight with his 10 strikeouts, and the impressive thing to me, Don, he got into a little bit of trouble, a couple of jams that he was able to get out of with strikeouts, with pop-ups, and with double plays. That was very impressive. Uh, the bullpen combination of Gagne and Papelbon was a little bit shaky. Gagne got a couple of quick outs, gave up three straight base hits, and then Papelbon coming in, that got exciting in the ninth inning, but uh, uh, you know, a good way to break this slump here. And again, but it wasn't easy. It was a one-run ball game, but they did get the win. Josh Beckett will go in Game Three of the series. Red Sox have a chance to win the series. We'll have the action for you right here on Nesson. Now back to Sports Desk. with FW Webb and the Sox will wrap up the series in Seattle on Sunday. It'll be that guy Josh Beckett against Miguel Batista. Nesson's high definition coverage gets underway at 3 p.m. with the pregame show. First pitch in Seattle is set for 4.05. 
Well, it was a special day in Canton, Ohio on Saturday night as the Pro Football Hall of Fame opened its doors to the class of 2007. Six new faces took their spots among the true legends in their sport. Gene Hickerson, Michael Irvin, Bruce Matthews, Charlie Sanders, Thurman Thomas, and Roger Werley all were honored at the hall. Friends and family members gathered to remember the great careers these six men had. The enshrinement ceremony took place where each newly elected football legend takes center stage and shares with the audience his career experiences in an emotional acceptance speech. Among the six, the playmaker turned broadcaster Michael Irvin and former Pat's nemesis Thurman Thomas, who led the Bills to four straight Super Bowl appearances. Every guy has probably stood up here and in all of these Hall of Fame jackets and probably said that they have had the best fans in the world supporting you. I'm here to say that's hogwash. No fans are like my fans, like Bill's fans. I watched the class of 2006. Troy Aikman, Warren Moon, Harry Carson, Rayfield Wright, John Madden, and the late, great Reggie White, represented by his wife, Sarah White. And I said, wow. That's what a Hall of Famer is. Certainly I am not that. And I doubt it. I would ever have the chance to stand before you today. Here's a look at the class entering this elite fraternity. Sanders and Hickerson were senior nominees. Thomas had eight 1,000-yard seasons and became the only player in history to lead the NFL in yards from scrimmage for four consecutive seasons. And the Lone Star State is well represented in this class. Oilers Titans offensive lineman Bruce Matthews, Dallas receiver Michael Irvin, and Buffalo running back Thurman Thomas, who grew up in Houston. Don't touch that dial. Tiger and Rory together again. Highlights from the third round of the Bridgestone Invitational, where Tiger Woods is in familiar company. To the track for the Bush Series Napa 200, where a rookie has the pole position. And if you want all the insider information on the goods at Fenway Park, stick around. We are only sharing this secret once. Here are your team Sully Mack League leading power hitters on the day. Sullivan McLaughlin Companies, providing electrical and telecom services to America's most beloved ballpark. America runs on Dunkin's new iced tea. Thirst quenching deliciousness like only Dunkin can bring you. Dunkin Donuts. America runs on Dunkin. Refresh your summer with Dunkin' Donuts new iced tea and the Red Sox by entering the Dunkin' Donuts Refresh Your Summer Sweepstakes. You can win a VIP Fenway Park experience. Visit Nesson.com and enter today. What would you do with a Nesson all-access pass? Visit Nesson.com and find out. Win the Friendly's Fantasy Sweepstakes and we'll take a ride in the limo to tour Nesson's HD Studios and meet a sports desk anchor. Watch the team take batting practice from the field. Visit the Nesson HD broadcast booth and watch the pregame show live from Yaki Way. Enter at Nesson.com and your friendly's fantasy could come true. Cool off this season with Bruins Summer Sundays. Join Andy Brickley for a new Bruins classic each week, straight from the Nesson archives. Chill with Rob Simpson in special summer editions of Rubber Biscuit. And kick back with Hazel May for all new episodes of The Buzz. Let Nesson put your summer nights on ice with Bruins Summer Sundays. I kept seeing these commercials for starting a home-based business. Finally, I checked it out, and it changed my life. What was I waiting for? Half of all U.S. businesses are home-based. What are you waiting for? This free service helped me find the perfect home business. All you need is a computer and a little desire. Their free success kit made it simple. Log on now to receive your free success kit. I got started to supplement my retirement. Now I make 10000 a month. I made enough money from my home business to buy a new home. Home-based business is a $427 billion industry, and over 20,000 home businesses gross over $1 million. 
I work only three days a week and make $9,000 a month. We're making $12,000 a month. And we have more family time. I'm earning more and working less. Log on to 67HBB.com. Everything you need to be successful in your home-based business is just a click away. So log on to 67HBB.com. Third round coverage at the Bridgestone Invitational. Tiger Woods starting the day four strokes behind the leader, Rory Sabatini. On the par four fourth, he closes that gap. Woods with a nice approach shot. And he would sink the birdie putt. That moves him to three under on the day. Tiger looking strong. Meanwhile, on the par five second hole, we pick up Sabatini. He too with a birdie attempt. And that'll be a nice circle on the scorecard. He takes the lead at five under par. Number 18 now, Woods for par. And this one goes just right of the cup. He drops a three under, just one shot off the lead. He shot a 69 on the day and is closing in on Sabatini. Same hole, Sabatini with a nice approach shot himself. He would go on to par number 18. Sabatini closed with nine straight pars for a two over 72. And will start the final round with a one shot lead over Woods. Meanwhile, earlier this year, Sabatini led Woods by one shot at the Wachovia, but Tiger went on to win the tournament. Stay tuned for Sunday's final. Bush Series Napa Parts 200 and the beautiful circuit GV Nev in Montreal making its NASCAR debut with a Napa Parts 200. A crazy finish to this one. Four laps to go on turn two. Kevin Harvick gets into Scott Pruitt, which causes a huge pileup and brings out a yellow flag. But before the caution, second place Marcos Ambrose spins out Robbie Gordon to take over first place. And during the caution, Gordon is very displeased with Ambrose. He is told to restart in 13th place, but Gordon refuses, thinking he should be in first or at least in second. So what does Gordon do? On the second turn after the restart, he spins out Ambrose. This allows Kevin Harvick to take over first place. Gordon would be black flagged the rest of the way and finish in 13th. Meanwhile, Kevin Harvick holds on to win the Napa Parts 200. Harvick, who started the race in the 30th position, wins his fourth Bush Series Race of the Year. Raj Fenway Racing's Carl Edwards still leads the way in the Bush Series point standings. David Rudiman is 787 behind Edwards. Now with his win at the Napa 200, Kevin Harvick gains two spots with Jason Leffler and David Reagan rounding out the top five. It's almost time for us to go home, but before we do, we're going to let you in on a couple of secrets when heading to Fenway Park. Stay tuned. Isn't it time you got serious about one of the most serious areas of your life, your lifelong companion? Don't leave it to chance. Leave it to great expectations. Join the thousands of members who have experienced lifelong happiness and join today. Visit them at greatexpectations.com. If you're like us, you'll never want to waste your time on a treadmill again. This free DVD shows you how Bowflex's tread climber burns calories in half the time of a treadmill at the same speed. Call for yours now. You need to see this free DVD. Tread climber lets me get an amazingly effective cardio workout in 30 minutes. It's quick, it's easy, and it makes me feel great. And it's compact enough to fit anywhere in my home. The tread climber machine combines the walking motion of a treadmill with the stepping motion of a stair stepper. So you do twice the work in one easy elliptical motion. It feels sort of like walking in sand. A tread climber workout can burn up to twice as many calories as a treadmill at the same speed for great results in just 30 minutes. I have to stay on a treadmill for 60 minutes to burn the same amount of calories. Who's got time for that? Plus, it's low impact, which keeps my knees feeling great. And if you think owning a gym quality machine is too expensive, think again. You can own your own Bowflex tread climber with no money down and payments as low as $23 a month. It's a lot easier than going to a health club. I know I have to take care of myself now if I want to look younger and feel younger. And let's face it, live longer. And the Bowflex Tread Climber lets me do just that in a quick and easy 30-minute workout. Tread Climber simply produces results. Bowflex built this machine so well that they even back it with a five-year warranty. If you're serious about your health and you want to get a gym quality workout at home, then you need Tread Climber. Call right now for your free DVD. It shows you why the Bowflex Tread Climber machine burns calories and works your heart faster than any treadmill on the market today.
Would you like firm thighs, tight glutes, flatter abs, a strong core, and increased metabolism? Well, Bowflex guarantees results in just six weeks. Call the number on the screen to get a free DVD or video that tells you about the most important innovation in home fitness ever, the Bowflex Tread Climber. Weekend early with Friday Night Fedway, presented by Team Sully Mack. The sooner we get you into the ballpark, the sooner we get you into the game. Every home game Friday, Nesson delivers game day experience that is Friday night at Fenway Park. So start your weekend early at 5:30. It's the new prime time. Friday Night Fenway, presented by Team Sully Mack. Just when you thought the season couldn't get any hotter, Nesson's turning up the heat. The Sox face the AL West leading Angels in a six-game, two-part series before closing out the month in the Bronx. We'll champion a winning cause, a world without cancer, for the WEER Nesson Jimmy Fund Radiothon. Rob Simpson journeys to Africa for two special summer editions of Rubber Biscuit. And get on the road to Fenway for a minor league doubleheader. It's blazing new, blazing hot, all August on Nesson. Be sure to tune in on Sunday night at 1125 for Sports Desk Lights Out. Bob Bryan joins me in studio to talk about the two huge topics of the week, Kevin Garnett and Eric Gagne, plus my one-on-one -on -one conversations with Roosevelt Colvin and Ben Watson as training camp kicks into high gear. It's all Sunday night on Sports Desk Lights Out. Well, if you've ever felt overwhelmed thinking about how you're going to get tickets to see your beloved Red Sox play at Fenway Park, have no fear. Author Tim Shea has written a book that will give you not only the insider info on how to get tickets to a game, but how to enjoy the ultimate experience at the ballpark. I came to the um, uh, Beanpot Baseball Doubleheader, where the park's wide open, there's only a couple hundred people in the park. Walked around the entire park very slowly, sat in hundreds and hundreds of seats, made diagrams of each of the 33 grandstand sections and exactly where the pole obstructed your view of home plate of the pitcher's mound and then went home and made these diagrams in Photoshop and uh, started to put the book together. The book's title says it all, The Ultimate Fan's Guide to the Nation's Ballpark. Tim Shea did his research and now fans will reap the benefits. For the fan who can only go to one, two, three, four, five games a year, um, they can take this book from the moment they think about getting tickets to the moment they go to the game and go home. It tells them everything they need to know about how to have a good time. It's everything you need to know about going to a Sox game at Fenway, how to get tickets, where to sit and where not to, and the best places near the park to eat, drink, and truly take in the experience. I know that Larry Lucchino has the book and Janet Marie Smith and from the people who gave it to them, who I talked to, they said, you know, they think it's great. They love anything that celebrates Fenway Park and a lot of the book um, is about what amazing things they've done to Fenway in the last five years. Overall, it, the book's really a celebration of the park. Since its opening in 1912, Fenway Park has been a second home to New England fans for almost a century. Tim Shea has decided to make it even more accessible, more familiar, and more special to those attending the games. And it's unique because um, I'm, a, I'm just a real fan, a regular fan, been a fan my whole life. Um, I wrote it from a fan's perspective. There's a very fun um, 2004 postseason quiz in the book, which brings back a lot of great memories. Um, there's an essay on the Yankees, which is written, as you might expect, from an extremely slanted Red Sox point of view. Um, so I just think it's, it's really a fan's book, and it, you really identify with it if you're a fan and a part of Red Sox Nation. And that'll wrap things up for us here on Sports Desk, presented by FW Webb, home of Frank Webb's Bath Centers. Thanks for staying up with us. For everyone behind the scenes, I'm Katherine Tappan. Have a good night, everyone. Remember the good old days when you had time to just go fishing? Life was simple back then, and fishing was one of life's great treasures. Well, now you can be ready to fish anytime, anywhere, with the amazing new 
fish pen. It looks like an ordinary pen, but watch it instantly transform into a durable fishing rod that you can carry with you all the time. What makes the fish pen unique is the sturdy telescoping rod made of super strong composite material and the solid detachable reel engineered with a beautiful brass finish. There's never been a fishing pole as easy or compact as the fish pen, and everyone from amateurs to experts love it. Casting's no problem with a fish pen. Sometimes I don't have time for bulky equipment. That's when I reach for my fish pen. When you're finished, it simply collapses to fit inside your shirt pocket, backpack, glove box, or even your briefcase. At work daydreaming again? Now you can spend your lunchtime fishing with the fish pen. This is great. With the fish pen, I can take him fishing anytime he likes. Wow, I always catch fish with my fish pen. The fish pen. It's the greatest gift I could give my grandkids. Through this exclusive TV offer, you can get the original fish pen, plus the detachable reel and this entire starter tackle kit, including hooks, lines, weights, and bobbers. But that's not all, because we'll also send you this deluxe pouch to keep it all together. A $20 value, yours free. You get it all, hook, line, and sinker, for only $39.99. Call right now and we'll double this offer and give you an extra fish pen for free. Just pay separate shipping and handling. That's one for you and one for your fishing buddy. Call now and get two complete fish pen kits, an $80 value for just $39.99. Call 1-800-943-6419 to order the fish pen at the special TV price of just $39.99. That's 1-800-943-6419. Not available in stores, so have your credit card ready and call 1-800-943-6419. Reason number 12, why you should own a Thermospas hot tub. They require no attachment to your home's plumbing. Simply fill it with a garden hose and plug it in. Thermospas unique thermofiltration system is completely built in and filters the water an incredible 144 times a day. So your water stays crystal clear with very little maintenance. All you need to do is enjoy yourself every day of the year. Call to receive a free DVD and 48-page brochure and learn the most important reason. Buying direct, you can own a Thermospa for only a few dollars a day. Call now and we'll include free delivery, free chemicals, and a $400 cash coupon. This $1,000 offer is free. Call 800-351-7300. Thermospas, luxurious hot tubs made affordable. The following is a paid program brought to you by John Beck Amazing Profits, LLC. How would you like to own this home for just $534? Now, we're not talking about a down payment of $534 with hundreds of dollars in mortgage payments on top of that every month. That's right. We're talking about owning this home free and clear of any monthly mortgage payments for just $534. How would you like to own this home for just $434? Or this one for only $200? All of these homes and the many more examples you'll see throughout this program were all purchased for pennies on the dollar at local government tax sales that most people don't even know exist. These tax sales that can give you the opportunity to own a home like this for just $179 are currently scheduled to take place in your area. And today you're going to learn how easy John Beck and his free and clear real estate system have made it for you to start profiting from them. What you're about to discover in this program is unlike anything you've ever seen. It is undoubtedly one of this country's best kept secrets. And it can make you a lot of money very quickly. I've only been using John's system for three months and already profited over $50,000. You do not need a lot of money to start using John's system. I started with only $200 and now I've made over $400,000 profit. My husband and I have tried several different ways to buy real estate. And this is literally the only way that you can buy real estate for pennies on the dollar. You can buy property for two to $300 and turn around and sell it for several thousand dollars. You can do it consistently, you can do it over and over again, and you can do it in all 50 states. It's my pleasure now to introduce you all to John Beck, one of this country's top government tax sale experts and the creator of the free and clear real estate system. Hi, John. Thanks for being here with us today. It's my pleasure. John, I have to tell you, I am amazed at the deals people are getting on these houses just by using the techniques in your system. 
Well, Debbie, the deals you can get at these local government tax sales are pretty amazing. They sure are. I mean, John, look at this home. Someone actually bought this beautiful three-bedroom home for just $534. And they own it free and clear of any monthly mortgage payments? That's right. The county assessor valued that home at over $114,000. <gasps> and using the techniques in my system, it was purchased for just $534.20. Wow, $114,000 home for $534. That's right. This nice home was purchased for just $846.24. <laughs> oh, whoa.